Start date 55603. The Kismet and Maxwell Plank have been authorized by Starfleet Command and the Diplomatic Corps of the Federation to engage in diplomatic contact with the Kwakwa Baron of the Leluri system to solidify peaceful relations between the Kwakwa Principality and the United Federation of Planets. The HMS Larira is in position at the outer edge of the Leluri Lir- system to greet and escort uh, both ships as they are intending to enter the sovereign space of the Baron. As the ships move to approach the system, a subspace hail from a small craft uh, reaches out, requesting permission to dock, trade, and perform other minor maintenance. Our first scene starts on the bridge of the Kismet, presumably. So I assume you're the ones who are going to answer the call. Can I just say, if you're struggling with the words you've made up, how do you think we feel sometimes? Hey, random generator's not my friend, alright? You could press the button to random generate something else. I did. That was the easier thing <laughs> you could say. Oh well. So, Captain right, Ben, yeah. you have an incoming hail. Uh, helm on a screen. And on screen appears the familiar yet unfamiliar face of Lyre. The vague humanoid that seems to be of all alien species yet of none, and dressed in various styles of and colors of Starfleet uniform, yet it's indistinct enough that you wouldn't, wouldn't be able to put your finger on any one particular color or style. And he seems to be inside a Type 9 shuttle uh, bay. A shuttle bay. A shuttlecraft. Is it one of our Type 9 shuttlecraft? <laughs> or is that also um, indistinct? Uh, Varder, give me Insight Con Difficulty 1. <laughs> They're like, he better not be. <laughs> Would you like some assistance on that? I do have no focus. Uh, I don't think I actually... No, I don't have a focus in this. Unless I... Tactical systems, but I doubt it. No. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Be like a... Is that one of our spam, <laughs> Captain? <laughs> <laughs> no, I passed it anyway. Look at that. Uh, it looks to be one of the Type 9s that the... Uh, that are out of the DSE. Okay. Ah, hello, Liar. What can we help you with today? On board uh, what appears to be one of our shuttles? Yes, I uh, rented it out for a bit of a cruising tour since things have finally calmed down in the area. So I thought I'd give myself a see a bit of the stars around us. And, uh, well, frankly, I saw you guys coming this way and thought I'd say hi find a friendly dock to come into, if you don't mind. Tune things up, and uh, I can be on my merry way if you uh, want me out of the way. Uh, we can certainly either bring you on board the Kismet or on board the Maxwell Plank, if whichever one suits you best. Um... And considering you have some form of a working relationship with Commander Miff. I said the plank may be a, a good option. That very well may be. Um, just get me the vectors and I will uh, approach for landing. No, understood. And please don't cause any trouble. Wasn't intending to, but uh, I will redouble my efforts. He shrugs. I'd appreciate it. Uh, means if it says classified, don't enter it. But yes, um, Con, send the vectors and contact the plank. Let them know they're going to be receiving a guest for the next while. Hi, Captain. Cut over to the plank.
Ops, uh, Captain, uh, we have a uh, communication from the Kismet. Uh, apparently, it's the person known as Liar. Uh, he, he, they're directing him toward our uh, shuttle bay. Very well. Have flight control provide precise landing instructions for the shuttlecraft. Hi, Captain. And then the, the two uh, officers begin talking back and forth between each other to coordinate. Mm -hmm. Dorja kind of leans over to you. Should we go and say hello to him? I'm not particularly familiar with this. I know the brief about this liar, but... I'll go down to the shuttle bay and welcome him on board. Very good, Captain. Uh, we'll uh, follow after the Kismet wants to give us the... Uh, go ahead. Confirmed. You have the bridge, Commander. And I'll depart uh, to the turbo lift. He nods as you depart. If you step out of the triple lift area and crossing across the floor is the indistinct yet easily recognizable individual uh, walking away from one of the DSE's Type 9s. Right. Which seems to have some level of, even on a casual glance, looks like it's seen uh, some navigational hazard uh, damage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but no, uh, no obvious weapon scoring. Obvious. <laughs> no obvious weapons going, of course, yeah. Hello, Commander. Flyer. It is my pleasure to welcome you aboard my ship. It's a nice little ship, uh, Intrepid class, right? Correct. Ah. So, uh, I see, I noticed from your vectors that you were heading away from DSC. Um, should I be worried? I do not believe there is cause for concern. Nods. I don't believe it's a powerful thing. So, uh, I am willing to uh, stay out of the way of your repair folk. Uh, I'm more of a pilot uh, and a navigator than a engineer. Um, would you like me just to uh, stay out of your way, or do you? Would you like me to come up to the bridge? I would ask if you were going to invite me to the captain's table, but I believe that's a tradition you probably forego more often than not. Indeed, I can set you up with some temporary quarters if you wish, and have my flight crew take a look over. This shuttle, it appears to have sustained some damage. Well, I mean, I've scratched the paint a bit, sure. Nothing I couldn't handle. Of course. May push the engines a little hard. If I may inquire, what is the... What is your intent in docking with this vessel? Well, I wanted to clean up the ship a bit, uh, say hi, rest my feet so I'm not traveling, and uh, possibly uh, carry on to wherever you're going, because you're probably a faster route back home, well, home, to duck, to port, uh, than me uh, zipping over down to DSE myself. Uh, but, you know, if things are particularly uh, combative, I am willing to skirt, make myself scarce and carry on with my rental. Uh, inside plus uh, command, difficulty one. He's All not right. saying everything. He's never Why would he everything. ever? <laughs> it's like that's his entire existence. Uh, focus in. Starfleet protocols. Make sure I'm asking the right questions for a person, a civilian person coming on board ship. Sure. 
sake of illustration. I'm sure as I can just do this. Two. Hey. It's a, it's a right sexy looking ship. It really is. Type nines are nice. Uh, yeah, I generate two momentum. <clears throat> um, there's a look of... Liar has that look someone ha has of a tourist who's watching something very interesting happen around them. Or they see th that uh, held breath, like they're waiting for the next move in a, in a sports game to happen. Like they know it's going to happen and they're just kind of waiting for it. But it's almost like he doesn't want to give that away. But he's not trying yeah. terribly hard. Diff one. He, you can yeah. kind of see the excitement on his face, but he's trying to play it off. I take it you are intrigued by our current mission? Uh, that'd be a somewhat safe assumption to uh, bear out since my presence is here and your presence is here and coincidence is a thing that doesn't quite exist in the way one would perceive it to be. Indeed. I will inquire as to how much clearance I can grant you into observing the affairs. Well, I'll probably uh, go to your, uh, unless you want my presence on your bridge, I will endeavor to spend some time in your, oh, it's not a call of that here, your um, crew lounge. Uh, Very well. If I'm, uh, or some nearby window, especially a short distance to a skate pod. But I will endeavor to stay out of your way. I learned my lesson from last time that tends to make your security somewhat upset. Not very upset. They don't try to stab me, which is which is nice. Or shoot. Maybe. I guess you guys don't stab much. I believe you will find security on the plank to be more diplomatic. However, I am glad that you have taken those lessons to heart. Oh, well, yes, it causes people much stress when you uh, look like you're about to steal something, which apparently I have that kind of face. Miss Cam just tilts her head to the side for a second, like she's trying to look at his face and say, no, I don't think so. <laughs> he just smiles at the, the no, as he notices he's being studied, but makes no comment. <laughs> Very well. If you have no further requests, then I'll be returning to the bridge. Oh, I have many requests, but I think they're a bit beneath a uh, commander of Starfleet. Very well. I'm certain you have acquired enough knowledge to know who to ask those questions of. Oh, yes, yes, I'm uh, quite knowledgeable. A little bit more every day. But that's how most people work, so I'm not sure how much of an achievement that is. So it's kind of like nod and, you know, step out of the door and gesture him through towards you know, arranged quarters. And the two of you carry on. And engineers begin to look over the shuttle, and you can give me a star crew task, uh, difficulty two, to see if they find anything odd about the shuttle. All right. Um, I'll spend one momentum here. Actually, wait. And the ship helps momentum. with uh, sensors plus... Um, Engineering, because that makes sense. Oh, all right. Especially no momentum. Drops diff by one. Task one. Two. Assist. All right. We generate two. Yep. As you return back to the bridge, uh, your engineer uh, stands and kind of motions towards you. Uh, Captain, can I have a word with you? Of course, Ensign. And I'll make my way over to the console. The engineer points at, uh, brings up a display of the shuttle wheel. Would seem I'm not sure how quite to describe this. Um Lieutenant uh Amsnor has uh 
tried to explain it to me a couple times, but from what we can tell, it looks like our guest's shuttle uh, has exceeded its uh, normal warp vector. In fact, it seems that it, um, or factor, I should, it uh, went about warp seven, which is about two factors higher than its rated speed. We did try to calculate and account for the fact that there are warp gates in the area. But that would only factor at best, with be uh, to our estimation, with that configuration, up to one factor rather than two. Um, although I will say it worked, but it worked to the point that it actually damaged the shuttle. Uh, and they, it appears it went through some sort of... Uh, uh, I... I hate to speculate, but some sort of cloud of particles that the navigation shields didn't quite uh, manage to deflect. In essence, the shuttle has been sandblasted, uh, Captain. I see. Well... If this does not violate the terms of Lair's agreement with DSC, then I see no overt cause for concern. However, Lieutenant Hamasnor is free to continue their investigation of the craft if they believe it will provide any further insights into warp theory or shuttle maintenance or structural integrity. Aye, Captain. Um, Lieutenant also passes up recommendations that if uh, we want our guests to leave, we give them a different shuttle to leave with. Uh, with such an unusual configuration, we're worried that, or he's worried that uh, it may be, the structural integrity may be unstable in a way we can't quite identify yet. Of course. I believe... We can make the quanta available for liar's use if needed. Uh, very good, Captain. Anything uh, for, further? Uh, for two, uh, mechanically, for two momentum, your lieutenant, because of your trait bleeding edge, and in fact your research and all that, uh, you may have a temporary speed boost advantage uh, to your warp drive uh, for the duration of the adventure. Ooh. Yeah, sure. As it's presumed that the lieutenant is performing those experiments on the Maxwell Plank while it's in motion. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what they do. <laughs> that's what the ship does. Let me just play with the engine while the engine's running. Well, yeah, if you don't play with it while it's running, what's the point? Uh, is all well, Captain? Uh, Dorja says as you uh likely begin to make your way back to your chair. Yeah. It appears that Lyre was able to substantially increase the speed of the shuttle they were loaned. Hmm. Strange. Indeed. Reminds me of the uh abilities the so called traveler was able to do, but on a much smaller scale. Perhaps. Time permitting, I will investigate with Lyre himself. Any message you want us to send back to the Kismet, uh, Captain? Inform him that we have taken Lyre aboard and there appear to be no complications. I will inform Captain Pend of the specifics at a later date. Hi, Captain. He starts, typing it, he starts typing in the report into his chair console and carries on with his duties. A right. new scene rolls along.
Is in a plank, warp in. Uh, plank shields aren't on, likely. Yeah, they're not. What the? Well, that's weird. It's not reading the Kismet's uh, power levels. That's. Weird. They're off the chart, that's why. The hell? Why is the max? Where the what happened? <laughs> oh, pa power's just not recorded. Okay. Um. Huh. Way to go, roll 20 today. So, I believe it's power's equal to your engine score, so... Because its power is 15 base. It's 15 base? Oh, thank you. Oh, it has a sensor reactor? Secondary. Yeah. Yeah. Of 15. There we go. And then that power still full. That's a full. What? What? Oh. <laughs> Fine, I'll do it this way. Well, Cylinders. we're just down to two players tonight. <laughs> Oh no, power just died. Oh no! This is unfortunate timing. Really is! Turns out Varda's power is tied to the Gizmet's power. Okay. It's called One LARPing. <laughs> yeah. Yes, his bones power the ship. Oh no. What's with all those wires just dangling off of Arter? Um Don't ask questions. Just don't ask questions. Should be up in the room. It's like a spore drive. Yeah, let, let's just accept it for what it is. It works for the plot. <laughs> yeah. So... Rolling for the time being, and we'll figure this out. Um, now we're playing a very high level game where the only PCs are captains. <laughs> uh, as the Kismet and Plank uh, warp into system, you're immediately contacted by the Lorira. Uh, on the and screen, you put your tokens next to your ships so we know who's where. See, the irony is, everything's just gone off for him. It's probably going to take him another half an hour to log into the fucking game. Mm hmm. Fun. Looks like your intelligence officer has been pulled away. So you're kind of left with your crew at the moment. And the plank, so, you know, you're not alone. Now, now aren't we glad we had. Ships go along. I mean, have you noticed that most most of our games recently, it's been Myth and Penned together, uh -huh. everyone else just elsewhere. Uh -huh. This is the HS, HMS Larira to uh, Tiger Squadron. This is Captain Pend of Tiger Squadron. It's good to speak to you, Larira. Myth will just, like, nod and Uh, at present, I am request. I hate to do this at the moment since you just got here, but uh, on behalf of the Qualqual Principality, I'm requesting your assistance. 
Uh, Lillary Prime is currently in the midst of a natural disaster uh, that is threatening our cities. Um, any help you can provide would be appreciated. I'll navigate you through the asteroid field. Uh, do we know which one Prime is? Is it one? Huh? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and actually, as she's saying it, you notice fighters are rushing to the planet, are like breaking off from their patrol routes and starting to rush back to the planet as fast as they can go. Uh, understood. Um, lead us through the the belt and we'll render assistance. Acknowledged. And she very carefully maneuvers through the uh, asteroid field. Do you follow her speed? Yes. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm not being cocky, but I'm more confident in our pilots and their ship pilot. Mm-hmm. Uh, do the two of you, uh, do the two of you do anything as you start slowly making your way through the asteroid field? Uh, I'd probably ask for a joint scan between the plank and the kismet for the planet. Yeah, like, I was about to. Like, try and get as much as possible before we reach there to to render assistance. Okay, so is that right? One, two, three. Uh, diff four reason plus. Science assisted by sensors plus science. The, the difficulty is high just because you're doing it from so far away. Well, it's down to three because I think the plank has advanced. Yeah. Does it go down yeah. again because Kismet has advanced? They're both assisting. Uh, I'll let it go down by two because it's two high sensor uh, boats scanning the same thing. And I assumed you guys waited till you're through the field because the field would have upped the uh, the difficulty. It's like, let's wait till we have a clear line and then we'll scan. <laughs> so am I assisting with just the ship or a person and the ship? A uh, person and the ship. Okay, I'll... I'll do this as a... Um... Eh, I mean, it, it is reason I'm sure I'll do it myself. Makes more sense narratively to have my crew do it. Momentum is a good thing. Alright. Uh, just gonna roll... Roll three there for the re-roll. And science, focus in... Uh, Starfleet protocols for rescue and responses. Uh, add complication. I'll take it. That's four hits. And then assist from flank. For Cecil, would you allow the observation focus? I would, yeah. And for Kismet, what's it? Um, sensors, science. So that's four, five, seven hits on a diff two. You both get a report from your uh, from your uh, crews. All right. Uh, 
Uh, as you pass through the field and begin doing your sensor sweeps from long range, uh, the Lyra now seeing that you're both clear increases the impulse speed to get to uh, to start heading back to the planet. Yeah, I think would probably would fall speed. The three ships begin flying through space at uh, a relatively high uh, impulse. Uh, do the two? Do you, either of you say anything to each other as you uh, are speeding along? Uh, I'm currently trying to think of what to do with the information. Hmm. I. Uh, so this isn't something I'm saying over to Pend yet. Actually, no. Wait. This is something that I'm sending over. Uh, through the calm signal. It's mostly being addressed to Cecil, but Penn will be privy to it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Lieutenant Sill, prepare a xenobiological team. The localized nature of the subterranean disturbances suggests at least the possibility of life forms being present on the Lurie Prime that were not accounted for in the initial survey efforts. Uh, understood. I shall pass it on to Captain Pend. Thank you, Lieutenant. Uh, then, yeah, I think apart from following Myth's suggestion about set, getting specific teams set up, I'd probably also give the order for all shuttles to be deployed and transports with permission from the government to evacuate as many people as we can from the damaged uh, small habitations, mining camps, power plants and the like. Um. I would, I would I'd obviously contact the star captain and try to get her to reach out to the government to allow us to offer aid. Uh, Sir Captain Koshi, when you start reaching out to her, you explain what you're trying to do. Uh, I'm the ranking uh, Star Naval Officer in the area. I authorize your actions to render aid to a Quokka uh, world. Uh, thank you. We'll also start beaming people up if necessary. Just a uh... We don't want people to be alarmed. Acknowledge. Uh, going to send you the recent uh, navigation log of the planet. I'm going to move to the far side of the planet here and give you room to take up orbit. I'm going to have my fighters uh, uh, bunch up on me until we figure out what's going on down there. Understood. The three main vessels can take a three-point orbit to hopefully best get a accurate scan of the situation. Acknowledge, Captain. Any idea what we're looking at? And the, you actually see the Larira starting to bank as it gets ready to uh, change direction. Uh, I'll send them the data we've got, so they have. Like, I'll just completely loop them in. It says it's not really the time to be withholding information when there's a natural disaster happening. Yeah, agreed. So, one crew support and one momentum for team. I'll spend that for the Kismet. And two for small crafts. As, you're ver as various crews start scrambling like crazy to get into position to be of help. Mm -hmm. Um... Is it possible to create an advantage in the same vein of use of transporters and med bays for both ships? Uh, for another two momentum, you can have your uh, medical uh, crews ready to roll like as you're rushing in. 
because everyone was at like a nice comfortable green alert and now all of a sudden everyone's mm -hmm. being told get on your feet go there's a net there's a disaster <laughs> Yeah, it, I don't. I don't think it's red alert, but probably more on the lines of like a blue alert, like a medical issue. A yellow would, alert would be appropriate. You just don't, yeah. Yeah, I'll go. It would be appropriate for. Uh, you just wouldn't bring up your shields. Because yellow is, is your all crew man your stations. It, it's blue just is if you have like a navigational threat or to the ship. There's just so goddamn many of them. Just depending on the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's why they give those those fancy Starfleet officers four years of training to know which one to use. <laughs> we're not quite as educated on it as they are. No. Hey, we're we're coming up on like three and a half. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'd probably ask the Plank and the Kismet's con officers to put us into a a free point orbit, so we're completely surrounding the the planet to get as much <laughs> coverage as possible. Actually, this this guy will move over here. Just get out of your way. Eventually, various ships with a, as you can see, a uh, lots of overlapping sensor fields. Mm -hmm. If there's anything to see, someone's going, someone's gonna see it. That's mm -hmm. one of those situations. The more eyes, the better. And just make sure I have this right. I do. New scene as you begin to take high orbit and you start getting an idea of what's going on on the surface. Is that a bug? Was I right? <laughs> Has this turned into a game of Starship Troopers? <laughs> Oops, you're bigger than that. And we don't need the auras because you're we're just noting that you're there. Uh as your three ships have gone into orbit, uh near the city. Whoops. Sound could be a little quieter than that. There we go. Forgot it built up. Uh, you see below what appears to be a massive uh, creature ranging about 65 meters in length and uh, passive scans register it at around 160 tons. With massive uh, legs and piercing uh, claws at the front of its face as it's menacing uh, one of the domes of the uh, city. Because this is a, uh, this planet is uh, a vacuum world or a thin atmosphere world. So every, all the areas are domed. Think like the moon. Yeah. That sort of thing. Um,. Okay. Um, and it seems to be yeah. It's cra It's already begun cracking this dome, and you can and the scans can see that there's people rushing away from the uh, outer areas toward the core. And so you can see that there are three small crafts in the shape of humanoids that seem to be in close contact and swinging what appear to be energy blades at the creature to no avail, with small armies of people about thirty per. Uh, suit if you will who are firing uh, like laser weapons throwing grenades at this massive thing and just nothing's happening okay uh helm blue alert take us into the atmosphere see if we can get a tractor beam on that entity uh commander myth best case scenario if we can move this creature away or calm it then great if not, and it's endangering the lives of an entire civilization, we may have to result to more direct methods. Commander, my phasers do have a stun setting. Understood. New directive is being added to the mission. 
as your command your relative command staffs alert you to a uh, existing directive that would that goes into effect that normally doesn't come up but it's like ah oh, just so you know I better it's my job as your yeoman to let you know this stuff mm-hmm. so you don't this? get in trouble Starfleet Directive 010. Before engaging alien species in battle, any and all attempts to make first contact and achieve non-military resolution must be made. Yes. That is why I am trying to tractor the thing. Yep. Like, <laughs> yeah. They remind you not out of a naughty naughty, it's more of a, oh, just so you know. Yes. But yeah, I didn't say it's not a torpedo, it's just a case of if we cannot get it to stand down peacefully, we may have to use a more forceful method. And we have Cecil's uh, xenobiological team, who is probably going to be trying to do the contact thing. I'm moving my ship in because my ship can enter atmosphere. Uh, this will be Safely. essentially a daring con roll, difficulty 2, assisted by engines plus con, to descend into low orbit safely. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, there's no complication because there's next to no atmosphere you're fighting against. It's more you're just making sure you don't just ding into the ground. Yeah. Oh, now he turns up. <laughs> uh, daring cone of two is this by engines cone. All right. Hello, Grinnin. Uh, one threat here. One threat, I. Uh, this is a crew roll. Rolling three. Hello, Varder. And assist from engines con. All right, we get one momentum. Is this our first blue alert? Nope. No, okay. I think we've had one before. Okay, cool. It's the first time you guys did it to yourselves. I usually have to do it to you. <laughs> uh, triggered one when I was in command at one point. Like, what's that? This is just a rock. You can alert for that, right? <laughs> and as in the Maxwell Plank, uh, doesn't glow very much from its descent. It just starts diving toward the planet. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, uh, Grinnin, are you with us? Silent Grinnin. Is he muted? Hanging on. Is he having technical difficulties? We may never no. know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you oh, can't hear me. Hey, we heard something there. Oh, okay. You can hear me now. Yes. yes. You can hear you now, yes. Yes. Hold on. I'm going to reset my music there because it cut yeah. off. There we go. What? Why did it turn off? No. Now I have to rejoin the game as a player. Wow. Roll20 took like a solid... Yeah, Roll20 like, is having issues uh, today. Not, not just on your end. Um, Everyone. So far we've determined that Firefox works as a browser to get Roll20 to work, but many others are not. Okay. Mm. There we go. There it goes. Uh, hanging on to a cup? What? Bird, are you okay? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, just don't listen to him. Right, so uh, as the uh, ship, is, as the Maxwell Plank is diving into the atmosphere, yo alert uh, klaxons are going off around the bridge as Varder escorts uh, Fleet Captain Grenon onto the bridge. The escorts, like I just arrested him. Well, you went down to fetch him because yeah, his shuttle uh, just docked up with you as you guys were approaching. And it took a second for you guys to get, uh, it, like, in the midst of the of the crisis, like, uh, somebody should be escorting the fleet captain up here to make sure he's okay, if there's anything he needs to know, especially since you're the intelligence officer. Uh, 
in this brief interim, Barter can brief uh, the fleet captain on what he knows so far. What do I know so far? Because I had my power drop out before that. Uh, everything up to when you until you lost, until your power went out. Because then that's when your character had to duck around, uh, duck away oh. briefly. All right. Well, we've got liar on the flank. <laughs> He's in a DSC rental shuttle, essentially. He stopped in for repairs. Huh. Strange. Yeah, but that's also his entire thing, so. Yeah. Uh, Commander Myth can fill you in later on if there's anything else on the plank. Or I can try to find out more from the plank. I we'll see. Find out later. And that's uh, when the two of you. Hello, Efrix. Walked in the middle of everything going wrong. Congratulations! <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that's about where I am right now. Wow, we went from two people to five people. <laughs> and and as and as the FYI, uh, Efrix, because uh, apparently this is a thing. Roll twenty is like dying tonight. Okay, good to know. Discord was already trying. Yep. Oh. And uh, wh uh, where is the Kismet currently at? Uh, the Kismet's currently in the Luluri system. Uh, they were called into a... Uh, just as you guys were approaching in uh, with the plank and the kismet, uh, the Laluri basically said that there was a there was a natural disaster happening on Laluri Prime, and said basically requested help and escorted the two ships after the planet. Um, various preparations were made, like medical teams being alerted that there may be a natural disaster incoming. Um, no details yet at the time of the call. Shuttles are being organized to get ready to fly. Permissions from Star Captain Koshi as the ranking Star Navy officer have been acquired to start transporting and flying ships down to evacuate civilian populace from whatever's going on. Mm. Okay, so, so we've been cleared to assist then. Yep. Great. Yes, yeah, so I made sure to actually get permission first before we just started doing shit. <laughs> Uh, there's good. an update to the uh, current uh, mission directives. Starfleet Directive 010 is in effect. All of that, it just automatically turned on because of the situation. Um, so that's in the pins as well. Uh, other things that came up. Uh, as they went through the asteroid field that surrounds the Lurie system, because um, it kind of makes scanning hard, the two ships immediately, once they cleared it, scanned the planet. And that's where the uh, information in Discord came from. Uh, that's that's the known information. Being um, on, uh... Hang on, I'm reading. Yep, and I'll cut over to the freehold in question. <clears throat> so I'm going to start moving people onto the board because this is going to be relevant for turn order. Whoops, not on the GM layer, not on the GM layer. Uh, that's yes. helpful to nobody. <laughs> Uh, and Efrix is aboard the Kismet. I'm yet to be able to see anything on Roll20, so... Yeah, it, yeah it, it'll take a couple minutes. So, what's, uh, what you... Are... It's weird that it's happening with this one, because I can open my other game, just... Oh, hell... <laughs> Oh, hello, Nation Crest created in Stellaris. I see you. Um, yep, so that is uh, Barca Freehold. That is the city, uh, the domed city that is in danger to this massive uh, alien creature uh, that is ripping apart one of the outer domes. Uh, there are uh, basically mechas. Uh, with small armies uh, who are trying to fight this thing, uh, which about 50 meters in length and about 160 tons, according to the last scan. 
Uh, and it seems to be able to tear through uh, Duranium, as it seems to be doing to this poor dome. Thankfully, uh, scans show that they've already evacuated people from the outer domes to the central hub. Um, the uh, local forces are trying to hurt the creature, but uh, to no avail. And before, and then, the, of course, the Maxwell Plank just dove in atmosphere to uh, get ready to uh, lock tractor beam onto the creature. Understood. You now know what they know. Yep. As part of um, entering atmosphere, would we have raised shields? You could raise shields, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to raise shields. We, we fight in kaiju? No, we're not fighting. We're Starfleet. Oh, uh, quick query to you, Fleet Captain. Uh, is there any directives you wish to add at this time? Or are you good uh, with the three directives in the pin? Uh, I am currently fine with the three directives in the pin. Roger. I'll just leave those standby in case more stuff comes up. All right, Plank. Time to not die. Um, <sighs> you re your tractor beam reaches out to them. And I gain one threat as the creature starts screeching and it bucks against the tractor beam locking onto it with incredible force to the alarm of your tactical officer who didn't know that creatures were big enough or strong enough to do that. Uh, but here we are. Um... Uh, you're, you must perform a control plus security task, difficulty three, to make sure it even locks on properly at all. It actually looks right. like it might break away. Uh, and then that's oh, enough, structure too. security for the, from the ship? Yes. Oh boy, that's total of 10 from the ship. Uh, too big. Max is, Max is good at his job, though. Woo! Um... Oh, shit. I feel I like, like to, I'd like to leverage uh, adaptive into the modulation of the tractor beam is constantly being adjusted to find the best one to secure this creature in a way that it is resisting the least as possible. I'll, I'll knock out a difficulty because of that. Sure. All right. Um, one momentum for an extra die. Uh, rolling crew. All right, starship assist. All right, so we generate two momentum. The plank locks on its tractor beam and the modulation shifts and bends in a rather state-of-the-art way. And... Which, is, which is to say they add a reverb effect to the normal tractor beam sound effect. <laughs> goes boom, 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 boom. it shifts in hue ever so slightly and they, red, they alert siren, red, red alert klaxons go off on the plank automatically report. as <laughs> tactical report uh we have a lock but we're putting a lot of strain on the power systems uh we might we have a hold, but if we want to keep it, it is possible we might blow some of our systems. Confirmed. Relay all relevant information on the procedure to engineering. Have them keep this operational as long as possible. We're performing a delaying action until the Kismet can figure out anything more about this creature. Uh, before the plank does another action to maintain the hold, what is the Kismet doing? As you guys can pass the <clears throat> sensors, you can see what's happening to the plank. The plank <clears throat> has its hold, and you can see the Passive sensors show that the plank, and actually, you guys have tied in. Yeah, we have tied in anyway. Sensors, so. so you can see what plank's problem is. They have a lock, but it's they're at risk of, of having blowouts on their ship. Doctor, so what keep... the doctor? So what just... the hell is that thing? Be before we continue, we we have set some things up. If you'd like to know what those actions are. Oh yes, sure. So one of the actions we set up were for shuttles to go down, so that would need the order. Another would be transport from the surface to the ship for medical and evac. 
and the other would be for Cecil and a dedicated science team to get a scan on the creature. Xenobiology team is... Uh, so technically, I told Cecil to put together a xenobiology team that could be assisting the doctor, potentially. Yep, that that's what I that's what I want to start with. D doctor, what the hell are we looking at? It's a tardigrade. It can make her <laughs> jump timelines. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would be a reason medicine roll. Okay. Bear with me, I'm trying to get my your sheet up. Hmm. Uh, let me get you there the it is. Somehow I feel like xenobiology might apply here. Maybe? What gave you that idea? I don't idea? know. The xenobiology team bustling all around. <laughs> Mumbling in sim speak, xenobiology, 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 xenobiology. Uh, I will call this... Difficulty 2. Yeah, I'm not gonna mess okay. with it. And what was it? You said reason... Science? Reason, reason medicine? Uh, reason medicine. Uh, it's reduced to one since you have a a team that's uh, been activated. Does the okay. ship assist? Uh, sensors, uh, medicine. Then that would go out to... Spend one for cautious. What's happening? Sorry, my washing machine is making troubling sounds. Does the diff go down again? I think it's to a min one for that, eh? Okay. No, to a min one is zero. Oh, well, there you go. Dim, um, zero. So we gain free momentum. Woo! Give me one second. I need to check on my washing machine. It's making some very troubling sounds. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Yeah, I think me and Myth were getting worried at one stage that it was just going to be the two of us having to deal with all of this. Yeah, I was here and then my power died, okay. Yeah. Also, the fact I, that... I think Panda and I make a good team. Yeah. yeah well... I, 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 Sorry about that. <laughs> I, I took a little longer to get back because uh, I received an opportunity to possibly sign up for uh, a COVID vaccine, so... Uh... <laughs> I had to take Ooh. that. I see. I got my second one on Saturday. Ooh. And I feel really crappy today. Ugh. <laughs> okay. It seems like the third day for me is like, you're gonna run on a fever. Then you're fine. But... Anywho, Sorry about that. Um, yeah, Washing Dan, machine is, is, is not about to explode. So it's, it's all good. <laughs> Did we learn? You are being sent a l quite a bit of information. Ooh. Yeah, me and Myth have come to the conclusion that I like science information. The two of us are the dream team. I mean, probably. Oh. 
Let's see. Is this is this the the creature that <laughs> from a uh, Galaxy Quest? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, momentum spend for uh, inf <laughs> obtain information. <laughs> yeah, I'll cost you one momentum for me to answer that. No, no. <laughs> answer yes. Uh, non native. Hmm? Huh. This doesn't sound good. Oh, I forgot. I gained one, <laughs> one threat due to its presence in the scene. Uh. Oh, it's got that that bullshit on it. Uh. That's odd. Captain, it seems to be non-native megafauna. It's some kind of Rock serpent? I'm sorry. Rock serpent. Um. You say it like it's the weirdest it's got, thing it, we've it ever It moves seen. like a. It propels itself the way a serpent would. Um. But it has things to crawl with, which is more destructive. So, like, it doesn't need to crawl. But it does. It's so heavy that it has to crawl. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, the little claws There's... are used as a way to grab it to the ground and pull itself along, but it's still sliding across the ground. Yeah. Like, there, you can actually see uh, in the scans massive drag marks across the uh, the floor, the rock floor. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it... Can rear up almost vertical? What? And you said that this isn't a native life form. No, it doesn't appear so. I don't know how it got here. Is it sentient? Um. Uh, I can answer that for a spend. Uh, I'd say so. It's got a reason skill. <laughs> it's not high, but it's got one. Hmm. I would say that's worth spending, don't you guys think? Yeah. Yeah, I've already spent it. Yeah. Okay. Sentient? Oh. Is it sapient? I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, Captain. Not sure? That's a good answer. That's a good way to read that information. <laughs> I'd, I'd need to take some more scans, I think. Observe it longer. People on the it, surface don't have that kind of time. It does... Hmm... Trying to think how to interpret this into cool speak. Into techno babble. Medical babble? Mm hmm. Um. Whatever it's whatever it's made out of, it it is almost similar to rock in in makeup. It makes it incredibly durable. Could take a lot of damage to even hurt it, and it seems to be. Well, that might explain how it got here. It it seems to be immune to vacuum. An extremophile. Hmm. Oh. 
It'll be very hard to move it. As the viewer mm. screen shows the if plate it, yeah. trying it, desperately to yeah, pull it away. Yeah, if it doesn't want to be moved. <laughs> it is a dark grade. It does appear that, that it has claws, which we've seen it used to move, and teeth. Which would indicate that it probably eats? Indeed. The question is, what does it eat? When you're that big, I'd imagine it, just about everything, but... I mean, it's currently eating Duranium. Hmm. What does it survive on that? Hmm. I say, right now, we should focus on getting people out of the section of the freehold that that thing is currently... They already are. They're all evacuated to the center. Yeah, they're all in oh, the center. Are. Okay. That's still about some 24,000 people in there. <laughs> and this yeah. thing is try. Uh, looked like it was trying to chew through here and go this way. It stopped because the plank is yanking on it to keep it from progressing forward. Um, we're currently at like a quarter impulse on reverse, I think. <laughs> Just like uh, grinding tires. And, and we still. Hmm. Suggestions. I need options, people. Well, again, we do have the shuttles and transporters ready to go they just need the order maybe we can try and find some form of frequency or maybe if Vada wants to reach out telepathically because that always ends up well for us uh, I could it probably doesn't understand a language I do and that might be a hindrance um Do you think it's safe? Wait, no, it's scratch not. that. <laughs> it's never technically safe. <laughs> it it certainly has the ability to be threatening, but I'm not sure how much ability it has to understand based on mm. the readings here. Uh, if that's... that's even if it understands a language that, that Barter speaks. HMS Lyra to Kismet. Kismet here. Star Captain Kochi here. Um, so, do you wish to lead the bombing run or shall I? Bombing run. <laughs> uh oh. Um, hmm. Wait. Wait a second. Um, Efrix, you said the thing is made of stone? As in. Is it solid stone? That may be, like, an additional question. It's... I got question mark rock beast? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <So hang> <laughs> like, that's so the best computer game form. Okay, so yeah, so it is like the thing from... From uh, sorry, <laughs> Galaxy think... Quest. It's it's not that it's a single piece of stone. It's like many rocks joined together into one organism. So it's kind of like a, a mineral-based carapace. Kind of. Hmm. Never mind then. I'll give the order. I'll try and take control of the shuttles for Kismet, Plank, and if they'll allow me the shuttles for the Larera and the Freehold. 
to start coordinating evacuation. Indeed. Star Captain Koshi, I think we need to focus our um, we need to focus our uh, our shuttlecraft and fighter efforts on evacuation. How do fighters evacuate people? Presence command difficulty two for Grenin. Uh, if you succeed at this, this may create an advantage that helps your uh, your shuttles. Because right now her her stuff her ships are ready for an attack run, whereas your ships are ready to evacuate. Like she Hold had a on. very different game plan than you did. <laughs> Hold on, my uh, my sheet is loading. Yeah, I feel that. Awesome. Oh, you have a haptic feedback uh, interface with your computer. That's neat. Ha 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 ha. I'm so funny. Um. When when the time comes around that I actually can roll it, Team Dynamics. Yeah, since she's an ally of yours, yeah. Yeah, well, and specifically because you specified that I'm trying to coordinate. Yeah. yeah. So. God damn it. What is wrong with you, roll 20? Something. I'll roll your sheet for the time being while it slowly loads. Uh, I, I will spend a momentum. Which gives, which gives me a reroll. Yep, because you have cautious command. One comp. I assume you're rerolling that. Uh yes, correct. No, reroll the one. <gasps> it's oh, a whiff. Oh. You're one short. Oh my god. Uh, ah. <laughs> ah. Let me let me think here. Let me think about what, what what I can do here. You whiffed on a seventeen roll. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You have determination, probably, maybe. Uh, I do. Uh, what value? That's yeah, that's what I'm trying to determine. Uh, uh the 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 third point on the mission directives. Oh. Do. Yeah, because right, because I'm trying to convince her not to go into a military uh, to not uh, take a military start stand. Start bombing this thing. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that. You're spending toward your one of the mission directives. Mm -hmm. Okay, we roll two. There you go, two and a zero. Wow. <laughs> you now the advantage that Star Captain Koshi, the, the Lariras uh, fighters are going to be of assistance to your uh, shuttles. Right. Now, Pend, you have a control plus on roll difficulty up by one just because. Which. Frankly, it gets brought down to two because you have an advantage in play. Uh, control con difficulty was three, brought down to two because you have support from the Lurira to help evacuate people from the freehold with your shuttles. Uh, you can get assistance via uh, communications plus uh, con. In 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 before um <laughs> in before Corbinian rolls a thousand challenge dice. To see how many people get evic uh, to see how many people get evacuated. Key. Uh, would you allow? Com <laughs> would you allow command for a discipline? I'll take it in this situation. Yeah. Command or con would work here. You're right. Would you allow either the focuses of starships to best utilize shuttles, team dynamics, or survival? Uh, one of the first two. Okay. Uh, take a threat. Yeah, and you definitely won't be moving thousands of people. You're just moving as many as you can while this is happening. Mm -hmm. It's like it's more people that were that are not on the in the city anymore. Which it hey, means, better if, than where they are. 
Yeah. If something Question. additional happens, there's a less chance for casualties because there's less. Are there people. other uh, settlements on the planet? Yes. Are many smaller settlements, but uh, of major settlements, there are a number greater than one. Uh, four major settlements across the planet. Depending on whether they are also having these life forms inbound, which is quite possible because we did pick up multiple disturbances, we could begin ferrying people to other places on the planet. So the shuttles and fighters start diving in and start rapidly getting ready to and communicating with uh, command at the for the city center to try to get people up, uh, get in the shuttle, get in, get up, get in, you know, just try and do that as fast as possible. That leaves Varder before Myth has to do something. Huh. I have not watched that movie in forever. It's been a long time. It's a good movie. Oh, wait, Myth still has a thing that they can do? After you go, I have to go with some um, plank to try and keep a hold on this thing. If we could find some kind of thing, like frequency, sound, signal, that would irrit. If it's, we don't, we haven't figured out a baseline intelligence for this thing, have we? It's just big thing trying to eat metal. Right now, um, maybe you could have some silver or something. I mean, I have some scores, but what that translates to exactly is difficult to say. Yeah. It requires uh, an extended task of research and thinking about the data and so on. Yeah. But there is an intelligence of some variety. Then again, a lot of living creatures have some level of intelligence. Does your data yeah. indicate sensitive hearing? <laughs> uh, that was not one of its features. Damn. I'm not sure it has ears. <laughs> oh no. Anything I can think of right now is is uh yeah probably borderline considered torture um so i have a suggestion yes which is checking to see if there are any emissions from the creature be those subspace uh various wavelengths of light pheromones etc remembering that i'm a security officer with nothing in science you can always activate a support character. This is true. Or ask the doctor who can spend to obtain information. Because she's looking at data and, and currently trying to read it going, uh, I'm trying to give you information as we're shooting. Like, I'm doing right, studies on the fly. <laughs> ask her a question about that. Any kind of signal like that from this thing. For one momentum, I shall answer that question. Yeah. No, stuff it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hey, that's still yeah. useful information. <laughs> yeah. Still useful information. And we got that one for free. <laughs> when when we're when you're studying, yeah. When you're researching something, uh, a negative is still an answer. That's true. Um for lacking a better term. Um Imagine if anything is even like trying to think what other missions you'd be giving off right are... now. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Sorry, just looking over my notes. Mm -hmm. The other oh, thing would be, yeah, let's go down there and track your beam as well. <laughs> Who's better than one, right? That was a consideration, yeah. Okay. So it is emitting a audible sonic frequency as well as pheromones. Hmm. Which uh, the recorder catches it as a, a screech of some variety. The thin atmosphere isn't carrying it very well, but you have very yeah. sensitive sensors. You're picking it up. What the hell? 
<laughs> There's also some, you know, chemical signatures around it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So either trying to find a way to use those to lure it away, or I don't know, yeah. plug it into a universal translator and see what we get. <laughs> but that it's is unlikely. It's worth a shot. Yeah. It's always worth a shot, and that's what our. Yeah. That's what we are supposed I, to do as Starfleet officers. Sure. What is it to plug it into a universal translator and see if we can figure something out with this? Yeah, see, see if, uh, see if you it's can't... Not, it's not entirely alien yeah. in terms of those specific means of communication. If they are it's that. <laughs> hmm. I can speak uh, well. Well, security officer, you, I have a task role for you. It'd be like, I've got an <laughs> idea. I might need someone else to do this. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know? Um, oh, he's it's probably okay a lot of things. Hmm. If we were planning a bombing run, I know how to do that. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it's a <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I've got a sheet here. It's like, here's a thought. I need you to do the rest of the thinking. Here's a <laughs> thought. <laughs> you think. I have part of a thought. <laughs> can you finish, smart, finish can it, you finish for, it me. for me? <laughs> I, have this, it's like, I have the start of a thought, but no idea how to implement this. <laughs> um, Help. Could I spend two momentum to activate walking encyclopedia? You can, that's one of the powers. Yeah. And she has. That'll be for sonic frequencies. Yeah, Maybe. that makes sense. Uh, spending one for cautious. Well, she's still got determination, but ship is consigned. She has technical expertise, she'll reroll that. Uh, determination. Uh, tech expertise doesn't fire, requires computers or, science, uh, or sensors to be used. Okay, then never mind that one. Then, still determination spend. Yeah. To what value? There's always more to see. Yeah, I'll take it. We're rolling two. Oh, good God. Holy shit. Wow. Oh. We are, uh... Two twenties. Man. She has no idea. Uh, may need to try and figure something out for that one. I don't think she has a way to reroll that, so... She could uh, challenge a value. You could challenge a value. A mission directive or one of her values. Oh, did you already use her determination? Yeah, that's yeah, what the reroll was. Oh. Rip. Uh, maybe challenge, work with what you have, and like, she's bringing in, uh, outside expertise, basically. Help reroll, or never back down. I don't know. Would you accept either one of those two? I would take the first one because she could call over to the Larira and trust in their science officer equivalent to help her with this or linguistics expert because they don't really have a dedicated science officer on their ships, but you know what I mean. Okay, let's try that again. And, I'll and to the same value from before, because that's the one you didn't take care of. That's the one you didn't get rid of. Yeah. 
God damn. At least I don't get threat for this. Yeah. It's not going well for Cecil. No. Yep. Cecil has no earthly idea to steal a phrase. Uh, mm. Apparently so. God damn it. Uh, myth, the thing's beginning to break free. You'll have to continue uh, modulating. Alright. Uh, difficulty? Difficulty... Control security difficulty five. As this thing seems uh -huh. really, really upset that it's being messed with right now. Like it's th it's thrashing like crazy, and uh, it's getting to the point that it's actually endangering some of the nearby uh, mechs and army. If you're not careful with your, because you might accidentally grab somebody off the ground and yank them up a hundred feet. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Your tactical Max even says with uh, half alarmed glee. Oh, this thing knows how to uh, break tractor beams in the most annoying way possible. That's that's information that we needed to know. <laughs> Indeed, that is a valuable insight. Okay. I'd like to see you look interesting, everybody. Is that an option? <laughs> no, Lieutenant, I don't think it is. I'm looking to see what resources we can spend here. I think I would have to do this to have any chance to make it fire. And yeah, nobody's figured out anything yet, so... Typical. No. Typical. Leave it to the organics. Typical Kismet Cruise. Oh, wow! Well, I did tell you, it's very hard to move. Uh-huh. Yes, we're we're seeing this. Um, I bet right. you didn't already know that, but com confirmation. Trolls. It's not just you. <laughs> yeah, it has the trait. <laughs> I'm well, going to. I actually to... saved a threat there because it has its own threat pool. Oh no! That's not. No, stop that. <laughs> Cease stop that. Don't worry, I spent all of it. Uh huh. Mm, good Ultra. for you. That doesn't make it better, GM. <laughs> doesn't make it better. Okay, I'm going to direct uh, Max here. Okay. Um, leveraging the star trip sh starship trait of adaptable again, or adaptive. Yep. Okay, you did four. Um, and I am directing and activating my uh, Christopher Pike Medal of Valor. So this is going to be two successes on my direct. And I'm not rolling. Um, and then a momentum for a third die. Is there any ship assist here, or is this just... Uh, structure, uh, security. Very minimal assist here, got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take two threat as well. Alright. Fourth die here. And... One... Uh, so that's two successes for me, and then... One, two, three... Four more successes total of six and a complication 
not enough to cancel out the complication because I'm not the primary roller here, so I can't use my medals, correct? Correct. Yay! Yay! More of this. As you're pulling on it, it seems to rear around and it lets and it kind of in the plank kind of lurches because it wasn't quite it was pulling super hard against a resisting force and all of a sudden the thing is moving towards you so the ship mm -hmm. kind of lurches and your max is desperately trying to account for it while he's trying to do that this thing begins to dive into the ground and uh underneath this mecha and the very and the some 30 uh soldiers that were in uh, in that area mm-hmm Oh boy. Six. Oh, oh dear. The nine soldiers disappear into the ground as they get swallowed up in the wake of it uh, fleeing away. Oof. We've lost contact. It's gone into the planet's uh, surface. Confirmed. Keep sensors active. Try and reacquire. And this mecha has to just not fall into that hole on its own. Uh huh. Hey, Good it luck. managed. Yoink! It just as it starts to fall, little rockets uh, fire up on on its back, and it jumps out of the hole. <laughs> Good for them. Good for them. Sensors report no contact. No, uh, contact is gone. We don't have sensor lock on it anymore. I think it's retreated. Well, while it's temporarily retreated, it may be worthwhile the Doctor and Commander Miff to try and figure out a way to neutralise or to calm it while I, I continue with the evacuation efforts. Agreed. If you don't mind, I'll try to coordinate from the surface. Right. Incoming hail from the Star Captain Koshi. On screen. Stand by, just a little bit of interference here. It appears we're victorious for the time being. For the time being. Uh, the Baron wishes to speak with you uh, regard, uh, to discuss the current situation. Very the well. mayor of the settlement should be able to uh, coordinate efforts from here. I'm going to leave one of my uh, star officers uh, to help uh, further, uh, speed the effort. If you have no qualms, I'll head down to the planet as well to help... Uh... Smooth the process for evacuation. Permission, permission granted. Well, I was talking to uh, the star captain. Fleet captain um, and captain. Uh, I have authority over the spaceways and airways. I have no authority on the planet. That it, that requires an audience with the Baron. I see. And his audience... Uh, and the audience is uh, me, isn't it? You or any of the officers you wish to bring with you to the meeting. I see. In which case, uh, Pend, I think I'd, uh, I think uh, it would be better then uh, if you handle things here on the ship. I want to make sure that at least one captain is still aboard the Kismet. Understood. Uh, Varder, you're with me. Oh, and roll 20 crash. 
Yay, roll 20. As they step away, uh, Koji stays on the line briefly and begin, and tell, and she tells you a few of the officers she's sending, what her fighters are doing, that sort of thing. Uh, f luckily for now, the shuttles and your fighters seem to be coordinated enough. I'll talk to the engineering staff aboard both of our vessels and hopefully try to coordinate with yours as well to start a beam-up process to try and get as many civilians out as possible. Uh, that's part of the problem, Captain. Um, a lot of these people, uh, the appropriate procedure uh, to moving any um, male Kwa Kwa is to put them immediately into stasis to prevent them from uh, contracting uh, spatial psychosis. Uh, the females of the... And actually... Wait, hold on. Is that true? Uh, stand by, Captain. Hold on. Just getting uh, demographic data. She, you see her reach and hold a pad and read it. Correction. Um, disregard last. It seems to be a mix of Staffy and Awuxo. Uh, we can pull them up to the ships as needed, uh, aside from the mayor, and, and the mayor would stay with the city anyway. Shrugs. Who is also a Staffy. That's, huh, that's rather progressive of the Baron. I'm pleasantly surprised. Is there any other planet sort of moves within this system where you have any other outposts? She shakes her head. We've only just within the last month established these new settlements. There was only the personal guard of the Baron last before the war. Uh, since then, we've uh, established many other settlements. Uh, this was one of the new ones for our vassal states. Just then. We could probably move them to other settlements on the planet, but I'm not sure we want to do that until... If we're going to move them, I would suggest we move them to... Either the low port, which or the fortress for where the general army is, um, they are the most likely to be able to keep them safe. Since I assume your, sh from what I understand of the specs of your ship, neither of our our three ships could handle that many people. But we would be basically stuffed from uh, act to, to uh, bow with packed people. to packed to the gills, as it were. Yeah. Uh, we can coordinate to get transferred to the fortress, but. If need be, we, we will be willing to, well, pack like sardines as, as much as possible. Hey, I, uh, human sayings are rubbing off on you. You're not even on the bridge. <laughs> There's other humans you can rub off on them. You can blame this on winter guests. Yeah, blame um, us on winter guests. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for now, yes, we'll want to transfer them to the fortress. But if that proves to be ineffective, then best last case scenario is to fill all three ships. I acknowledge, Kismet. Well, uh, I'll have my. One of my deck officers uh, stay in touch with you and uh, update as needed. I'm going to go down to the audience to introduce those uh, coming. Is it just going to be your uh, fleet captain and your uh, intelligence officer, or are you sending uh, more to the delegation? Uh, I think the question is, um, will uh, will we need to uh, take a shuttle? No, we need to preserve uh, our shuttle complements for uh, evacuation efforts. Uh, we'll be transporting down, so, uh, your thoughts, um, uh, your thoughts, uh, Farter? I think we'll need anyone else. For going down to the surface to speak to the Baron? Yeah. If we wanted to, while we're down there, send personnel to look for the missing Quaqua personnel... Hmm. We are in a position to do search and rescue. Indeed. If you wanted, you could bring Thonseb with you. Yeah. Diplomatic attaches are for diplomatic events. Well, I was gonna, I would say Bonsab or maybe one of the new 
con officers for like certain protocols. Oh, yeah. Or both. I shall cut to the uh, transport room because that's kind of where we're going to be. We're focusing at the moment. So what? Maybe security detail to assist Bon Savin. Uh... Maybe we send Ilcio so we get some of their activation. Okay, uh, Ilcio and what? Maybe a con officer for protocols and the like. I'm thinking Ilcio because he's specifically diplomacy con. Yeah, so if you just be him, and then you guys can use your con officer for doing shuttle sweeps for search and rescue. Unless we want to get more activations in for a con officer. Yeah, that, I've, that's I've, why I've... I said you guys could use a con officer to do that. Yes. Oh, right. I blanked on audio inputs for three seconds there, sorry. Because I, yeah. I kind of have a con officer who's got good con, but not a good pilot. Yeah, con can be used for regulations and like paperwork as well. No, which one's not? Which one is that? That's um, Isala Shastri. Yeah. Oh, she's still good at flying. She's not focused on it. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else going to the, del the going with the delegation? Let's let's say Ensign. Shreer and Ensign Ilcio. Yeah, so, yeah, might as well. But yeah, if you guys need Double to send up. someone to look for those, you can. We've got time, maybe. <laughs> well, these are the people who have to go to, who are going to the audience to get to secure permission to even yeah, land. Yeah, no, I was saying for the people on the ship. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, any other equipment the delegation is bringing with them? Or are you dressing in any particular fashion? Given this is an emergency situation, I don't think we're dressing yeah. up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, not dressing up. We, we it's don't also have that luxury. On duty, you can wear your common clothes. I yeah. remember that. Yep. Yeah. If, if if he takes if he takes any kind of exception to that, I'll uh, well, I'll I'll talk my way out of it. Anything fancy? No, I don't think we need anything extra. If this is just. A Acquiring landing permission. We blame space madness or whatever they call it. If he has a token now. Oh, well, I'm going to swap that in because that would be ideal. Yeah, I went through all of our support characters and gave them at least the... round things. Oh, it still has a square in its place. That's what's going in, on. Yeah, because I. Yeah. Yeah, hold on, let me fix that. Yeah, and I'm only saying this, uh, Isala to get the initial activation. <laughs> oh, it's already in there. Save. Use this token. Save. There, that shouldn't happen again. Close, close. Here we go. All right, so the scene, a new scene as we have, as we cut to the audience. Uh, for research, there is going to be a scene involving that that happens after the audience. Mm. Or during the audience, arguably, but you, you get what I mean. Uh, where's my... This is what I get for organizing. I lose where things are. Um, oh. Uh, yeah, that's right. Beaming into the uh, capital city, uh, which it is, the capital city is the, and was the original outpost, is Udek Lowport, also known as the Barony of Udek. It is a mostly palace with a very, uh, with what used to be a very rudimentary uh, landing pad for like shuttles to, to land and make output, uh, make deliveries but it's since the low port has actually expanded to be a lot more uh substantial and it's actually like a proper city and uh, with the fences and so on and but it's still very much a seat of a noble even when you walk into the main chamber despite the crisis 
Uh, you can see around you, you see like guards uh, with their uh, swords at their hips and full armor, people working at consoles. And at the far end of the room is a baron that you would have already been aware of and two faces that you are not immediately uh, familiar with. Um, there are some sculptures at corners of the rooms, uh, which look to be uh, a artistic depiction of the planet of Kuli, the homeworld of the Kwakwa people. Four of them. Sorry, huh? Four of them. <laughs> well, it's from different angles. Then we don't have to bother turning the globes. You can just look at them. <laughs> God. Wow. Star Captain Koji takes the lead and she looks around the room. Baron, given the uh, emergency, may we forego the inter the full introductions? Huh? Oh, yes, yes, yes. And he starts, he, he seemed distracted talking to his two advisors and kind of starts waving at Koshi impatiently. And Koshi just waves at you guys to follow her. All right. Okay. I present. Briefly, Fleet Captain Grenin, his Lieutenant Commander Varder, an intelligence officer, uh, Ensign uh, Chichasrir, or Sala, she is their pilot, and a Ensign Isilu, a diplomatic officer. I assume we are moving up behind her as Khan. I <laughs> need a Grenin. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I can't move anywhere until you do, Grenin. <laughs> I, 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 can't, I can't move my, my token. How dare you? I okay. rolled 20 still loading. Oh. You might like, need to switch to Firefox like I had to. Yeah, you'll probably, yeah. You'll probably yeah. have to. Give me a sec. I'm gonna switch to Firefox. What everyone else mad. had to do. I always roll I always run roll 20 in Firefox. Yeah, I was gonna say, ha, I didn't have to change a thing. <laughs> it's still not fast. <laughs> no. But, but I didn't have any additional difficulties. Yeah. The Baron uh, nods at the four of you. Welcome, Starfleet. I present to my advisors the my eminent scholar, Lemmy, and general of my land forces, Amsaf. Uh, when Lemmy <laughs> looks over, she kind of steps forward a little bit so she can kind of look around Koshi. Uh, Lemmy looks to be like in a full like lab coat, has like a, a pad sticking out of one pocket, a bunch of writing implements and styluses in another pocket, a scanner in her hand that she's like holding and looked like she was she was talking to the Baron about before you guys came in. She seems to have a backup one on her left shoulder. I love that. Um, but you do her? notice that at her hip, it, you do notice that she has a Star Navy pistol, but she's not in the same uniform as Koshi or any other Star Navy officer you've ever seen. Which implies she's either nobility or she's an officer who is retired. But Can beyond that, it's hard her? to tell. Huh? Can we adopt her? I love her. <laughs> <laughs> Get out. No. Uh, the general uh, <laughs> is dressed up, and is in full, uh, like a flight suit that's armor plating. I almost think like Mass Effect level, like a full like Eva armored suit with like a rifle on his back, a pistol at his hip, a sword on his other hip. It looks to be some sort of computer attached to his left arm. And he looks annoyed that you are even here. <laughs> and he's not hiding it at all. Oh, I Wait. can smile at him. Don't worry. <laughs> I say, eh, I've done this song and dance before. Um, uh, only last time they were standing to my left not my right. Yeah. Um, Star Captain, you can't possibly think these aliens have any business on a Qua Qua world. I, I presume nothing, General. I leave that to the Baron's discretion. She stares at him, unblinking. Now, now, behave yourselves. We have guests. The General kind of nods his head and steps back, but seems to look like he's ready to fight on a moment's notice. And again, he's making no efforts to hide that. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Now then, uh, I think we have a lot to discuss. Preferably. Yes, yes.
uh, was there any sort of indication about, um, uh, about these events? Uh, had you been detecting any seismic anomalies leading up to this? Uh, scholar, I think that falls into your expertise. Hmm? Oh, yes. Of course, Baron. Uh, hello. Oh, you're human. Interesting. And a Bajoran. Focus. Scholar. Oh, yes. Sorry. Hello. Uh, I'm Scholar Lammy, and uh, you asked me a question, so let me answer. So, uh, there's a few things to go over, but I'll shorten it and save you the headache. Um, so, it seems that we, in the last few hours, these various creatures have been appearing and attacking our major cities and smaller settlements. Uh, they will burst out of the ground, and then they burrow back into the ground, very uh, once repelled. Um, it seems they are heading to one of the southern mountainous uh, regions on the planet, uh, but once they get to a certain uh, plate, uh, our scanners become unable to track them. Uh, secondly, it seems that they are a uh, species that take on a that consume various uh, materials, both uh, advanced and uh, mundane. So, which seems to reinforce their rock-like and internal uh, skeletal structure. Although there is the unfortunate side effect that they seem to be able to adapt to organic matter and uh, they seem to find, uh, they seem to want to get to the centers of our cities where everyone is gathered to get all the nice metals and people and blood and sinew. That's enough, move on. Oh yes, sorry. Um, <laughs> right, oh, the one thing I was just getting into was that I have no idea where they've came from because all scanners, all scans of this planet and surveys for the last 40 years have indicated no such uh, beast or creature of this type. This is a, a T-class world uh, with minimal life, only adaptable with advanced technology. Uh, and we would have checked, points out the general, we would have checked and we did check with the Star Navy's help and the scouting service for, say it with me now, he stares at her. Vacuum-like monstrosities that consume our insanity. We know this because we've done this before. You've screwed Jesus. up before. Jesus fucking Christ. Didn't we already confirm on our end that these are not native megafauna? Yes. You confirmed that, right? Yes, uh... According to the readings we've uh, we've made from orbit, uh, we determined that these creatures are extremophiles, uh, capable of existing in vacuum, likely for traveling between planets. But I find it highly uh, I fi find it highly unlikely that a creature such as this would have been able to travel to this planet without tripping some sort of uh, orbital. Uh, 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 orbital, not defense system, but a uh, orbital sensor grid. You didn't have a meteor strike recently, did you? No, uh, that's uh, something we would have paid a special attention to. She looks at the general like that's a question she's already been asked. <laughs> hey, at least if I'm the general on the same page, you might like me more, <laughs> a little bit more. <laughs> Well, it looks like you, you Starfleet, are not idiots or insane after all. I actually agree with you. I frankly think that this was an invasion through some hostile force, whether these creatures have done it of their own will or they were deployed as bioweapons. The fact uh, that our scholar has failed to detect their approach is not an indicator of the fact that they somehow miraculously sprung up from the rock, but that they have been transported here somehow. No, that's not entirely true. Uh, if these things, uh, uh, if these things are mainly comprised of rock, stone, uh, it's entirely possible that any uh, prior scans would have only picked them up as uh, uh, abnormal rock formation uh, if they had lied dormant beneath the uh, planet's surface. Uh, after their arrival here. All we know is that it's highly likely that these creatures um, are 
probably not native to this world. When they arrived here is another matter entirely. If they're made of rock, they could have existed on this world for millions of years. We could get to that once we found a way to repel them, drive them off, or otherwise pacify them. Pacify them. Well, I can very well allow these creatures to harass my subjects. It is unbecoming of a baron to allow his citizenry to be harassed by beasts such as these, and it is the duties of our learned and our military, both of ground and in space, to see these things off. And I, for one, he looks at the general, who kind of almost glares at the baron, but thinks better of it, and just kind of looks down, and then looks back at Grenon. I, for one, would welcome the assistance of Starfleet in assisting my efforts to bring peace and order to the planet. Understood. Uh, assisting, uh, assisting people in distress, even outside of the Federation, is the duty of Starfleet officers. We're more than happy to render assistance. Very well. What resources will you require, Starfleet, to achieve your mission? Well, for starters, access to any... Uh, he turns to uh, the scholar and says, any data that you've collected over the last few hours would be invaluable. It will save, uh, it'll save our science team's time. She walks up to you. You have a, a portable uh, data retention device, yes? Or a both handheld or in a panel form? Uh, he reaches to his belt, pulls out a tricorder, flips it open. I think she's asking for a pad. Tricorder can do the same thing, but... Yeah. Well, those, yeah. and, and, the, and those usually have uplinks to a ship's computer. She was asking for both, to be fair. Uh, yes, okay. Uh, yes, um... For either um, or. I have a tricorder, uh... He turns around, uh... Uh... Ilcio, uh... Do you have a pad? Walks over and hands you a pad. Well, almost seemed to be already doing it as you were, uh... Thank you. Vardar has, like, five pads on him at any given time because <laughs> intelligence... <laughs> They're all red and require biometric locks. Um, Not one of them isn't. That's the bait one. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, uh, these should do. Uh, let me know if you need any assistance with the interface. She points her scanner at yours and starts tapping at it. Looks at yours, looks at hers, looks at yours, looks at hers. Frowns, closes it, puts it into one of her pockets, grabs the backup one, opens it up. It looks like a, a Federation tricorder with certain modifications to it that don't look Federation issue. And she starts tapping away at it. Ah, oh, there we go. And you get an Elkar's upload request from another tricorder of uh, undefined uh, manufacturer. Hmm. Did you receive schematics for these uh, for your uh, device somewhere? Yes, spoils of war. Oh, it was quite a present from the Baron. I'm very grateful. Thank you. Tap, tap, tap. Quint. Gre Grenon, like, he, he he leans to the right, looks beyond the scholar, says, Spoils of war? Oh, you no. will speak when spoken to, coward. The general steps up, looking really close to taking a sword out. Excuse now, you? Now, now, General. The offense wasn't to me, it was to the Steel Prince. That's an offense to all of us. Ungrateful, ignorant. That's enough, General. If I wanted him dead, I would have had him killed already. And right now is not the time. So if you would, please stand back. It's reassuring. He glares at Grenon. 
glares at Varder, glares at Ilcio, glares at Shashir, because he feels like glaring at anyone who's not Quaqua in the room, and eventually steps back. She is at least blue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's at least blue. Does that help? <laughs> How's it though? <laughs> it <was> sarcasm. <laughs> and there you go. Great. All right, I'm gonna start uh, transmitting this up to the kismet now. Very good. Most agreeable of you. Uh. Any other assistance you require of us? Oh, you asked me a question. Uh, I believe at this time, as we are not in a military alliance and you are considered in bad standing as a member of the court, I feel that the answer to that question is not relevant to the current emergency. So I feel no need or inclination to tell you, sir. I I, I want to get a read on that on on him. That 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 was sus. Yeah, of course. Uh, take threat. Sure. Deception focus. No. No. He's, okay. That, I think he's being pretty blunt with you. <laughs> D diplomacy. Yes. Yeah, of course. He's being blunt, just honeying the words a little. Mm -hmm. Direct, not blunt. There we go. Mm -hmm. Um, you get a read that this guy is willing to put up with you because it's in his interests but if it wasn't for this emergency you probably wouldn't be having this meeting mm -hmm. at least this quickly with uh, this speed and casualness I see uh, you get one free question because of cold read yes I do and I think my question is going to be uh do I get the impression that his opinion would will change if we're somehow able to settle this matter? Yes. Got it. Okay. That that's what I need. That's all I needed to know. It, it, AKA. These two pro if if we solve the first problem, the second problem will sort itself out. Okay. Um might there be a uh place here where we can uh uh where my team can set up shop, so to speak, uh and coordinate with our ship? Uh, and your, uh, uh, and your... Advisors. Yeah, and your advisors. All we'd need is a room or two. General, if you would. Yes, my Baron. <clears throat> Major Yimmick, if you would. And the person <laughs> sitting there who's been, now he's been quiet, he's been enjoying himself, trying to, he's been... <laughs> Not looking at anybody, just waiting and just kind of sits up and looks at the general and just, you see him tilt his head like, really? The general glares at him, the major sighs, looking quite annoyed with the assignment, but walks over. I am at your service, Starfleet. Please follow me to the console behind you. He gestures. Over there is a console that you can use to your leisure. Here, let me show you how to use it. And he starts walking toward it, expecting you to move. And Grennan moves. It also moves, because you did. Aside, please. And a lady in a uniform with some sort of insignia that's unfamiliar to you kind of just steps aside. And Yimek very <laughs> condescendingly points out how to use a computer. This is the mouse. This is a keyboard. This is the display screen. Like, you don't know how computer, what a computer even is. I think I, uh, all right. Uh, this all seems fairly intuitive. Uh, thank you very much for your assistance. Presence command difficulty one. He doesn't believe you. <laughs> or science, if that's needed. Command. 
Uh, presence. And I'm spending a momentum for the reroll. If I was better at science, I'd be like, just remotely gain access to it and start pressing buttons to mess with them. <laughs> <laughs> Diplomacy? Sure. I'm gonna reroll that. Zero. Noise. She gains some momentum there. Yeah. Oh. Very well then. He gestures. I will be seated here if you need me. Of course. And this lady kind of sits down, kind of looks over, sees you step up to the controls, and she shrugs and takes a seat. And uh, Grennan is going to effectively uh, open a line to the kismet and basically confer the information that he's received, you know, the data files from the scholar, um, uh, an update of the situation, uh, and effectively now they, the kismet has a open line to the team down here. I mean, not that they didn't before, but... Who dropped? Uh, Efrix. Efrix. Ah. The internet hates you right now. Yep. As a crew. Yeah. So, uh, for now, that that's where we stand. We unfortunately don't know. I... There's not much more to say, I don't think. No, uh, yeah. I would like to <laughs> see, oh uh, yeah, General Amazeth. If I could have your cooperation in coordinating your ground forces with my security forces, we might be able to find some sort of exploitable option with this creature. Or at the very least, coordinate a rescue effort for some missing personnel of yours. Uh, presence plus security, difficulty two. Uh, I'm the one reaching out the olive branch here, lead by example. <laughs> yep, you you didn't wait for Grenin to tell you to do that, you just did it on your own. I mean, we've got a different social structure, I don't need to wait for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, give you a... Th yeah, give you a threat. Sure, I don't need... Uh, it's not, I'm very short on those. Yeah, you are. Entire, oh, yeah, I should probably change that to security, too, huh? Rather <laughs> than rolling con. I was like, huh. Holy hell. Wait, what did I... 18, 16, 15? Okay. Uh, You're a captain now, eh? Also, my icon's apparently broken. <laughs> Actually, I know how to fi half fix that. I should archive that but anyway, because he's not present. Anyway, um... Oh, that is broken, weird. Yeah, I don't know why. I'll fix that eventually. Um, eventually. Yeah, yeah. After this roll. Oh, well, the uh, <laughs> mission directive of establishing peaceful relations with the system. Yep, I'll take that directive. It happens to be that their military leader would be very important to that. There we go. Oh, and now it's working. There we go. Hmm. Hmm. Whatever. You? Yes. <laughs> Thank so you. Right and this I is keep how Barter it. gets more favors. The general looks at you, Varder, as you plain, you very directly, with no frills, tell him the tactical needs you need how much help you want. Like, you know, you're not trying to pat him on the back or nothing. You're just telling him what you need. Um, and he seems to look at you and his glare kind of softens. He kind of just nods. That makes sense. Lieutenant Commander. Major, if you would make sure this officer has the irrelevant station. Uh, yes, General. And Major steps to his feet and walks by you and gestures this person to step aside. This guard steps aside. This is the control panel to speak with the ground forces. 
We can coordinate from here. Shall I speak with my ground forces, or do you wish to do so? I can speak to my forces, you can speak to yours. I'm sure they would appreciate a familiar voice than a foreign one. Emseth grins, but it's the major who responds. Very well. What? You have some sort of subspace radio? And he starts typing out the controls as you see a, ta a strategic display of the planet and all the ground forces there. Tap his combat. <laughs> to Varder, to uh, Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Shthrolik. Uh oh. Any other actions happening in this audience? I think you guys have established your base at the moment and have gotten secured permission to move about on the planet. So new scene. Oh, yeah, I should have this music up right now. Boop, boop. Yes, into the deep. That is the song that makes sense for the scene. Hell yes. Mm -hmm. So, firstly, a firstly, the kismet is obviously up in orbit with the Lyra. Dang it. There's a fast way to do this. Let's go to here. And do this. Copy. Um, I would presume that the, uh, whatchamacallit, the plank comes back into orbit. It doesn't stay down at, right next to free to the freehold. Uh, we're gonna scan a little bit there to see if we can reacquire sensor contact with the, uh, you know, biological life form. Uh, reason science difficulty two assisted by sensor science. All right. I have focus there. Yeah, I don't know if that's. Oops. Don't need cut conference too. And then Sunder Science drops diff to one. Alright. So five hits total on diff one, we generate four. Uh, you have confirmation that the you have lost contact with the creature and you aren't able to pick it up again. It's either gone so far deep you can't sense it or it's moved too far away. All right. Then, yeah, we'll ascend back into orbit and start uh, an analysis in conjunction with the Kismet on data we have recovered so far. Could we spend that one for a question or advantage of... Um before we lost its what its position we knew what like general direction it was heading yeah you can spend one to get the heading of departure somewhere in this direction toward the mountains okay uh, I assume we were there... oh, gone are there any other settlements along its path or projected path? Uh, there are some minor settlements, but a lot of the, a lot of the people who are uh, were in smaller holdings retreated into once the crisis happened, retreated into the major settlement, the major cities, okay. like the low port, the freehold, the shelter, the scholar shelter, and so forth. Because, yeah, no, they're like, no, we don't know what's happening, so everyone can get to the most secure facilities we have on the planet. Um, I assume yeah, probably... we've got the data from the planet, correct? Yep, you have you uh, you are in contact with Grinnan and Varder on the planet. Oh, yeah. Because we're... they're currently at the capital. Getting active military updates on what the ground forces here are doing. Well, it's not just that we would have received... Uh... Scholar Lemmy's data. Mm 
if you want to do that search and rescue for their dudes, that's also a, a thing. Uh, yeah, I was going to order slash ask if Myth and Ephrix would wish to joint lead the scans and investigation of the creature while I deal with the coordination planet wide. Sounds good to me. Sounds like a plan. Uh, does the plank pull down its shields by this point once it gets back into orbit? Yeah. Okay, just want to double check that. Oh, sorry, Captain. So, dark creatures were there the whole time. They attacked the sh- <laughs> uh, They're now made out of the same metal as the hull of the ship. <laughs> uh, I'll note that uh, once you got uh, once Varder and Grenna get settled in, uh, Star Captain Kochi return retreats to uh, retreats returns to her ship because she's uh, she's a Star Navy officer, not a ground officer. <laughs> like this is a ground matter, so. Uh, maybe... I'll just make sure the uh, the sector is secure. But she's, she, keeps her, she keeps her capital ship nearby in case you need her staff's assistance. It's literally a ground matter. Yeah. Uh, maybe do Myth and Nefrix wish to go first? Sure. Again. Alright, so I'm just going to gather you two as such so I keep myself organized. So, Research. uh... Let's go. And we're being fed information from what they've gotten up on the ground already, correct? Yep. Scholar Lammy's findings. And you also, uh, because of her findings, she also gives you the contact information for her, the, her scholar shelter. Which is a which is a qua qua way of saying a fortress made for scientists. So it's more a sensor and recording studio than it is a a military fortress. It's to protect you from the elements and the lo and whatever local animals are there. Not really a military ca attack. Mm -hmm. So what do you wish to research? That's a good question. I have lots of questions. <laughs> I mean, would this be the best time to start a extended task? Or scientific method? You need there a target. Was, there was an extended task that uh, we uncovered in our initial investigation, correct? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was whether or not it was... Yeah. Yeah, so oh, yes. let's... Doctor, shall we begin with an analysis of this creature's mental and physical capabilities? Good place to start. According to the data, as you begin uh, looking into it, according to the data, it seems uh, the scholar has uh, intends to launch an expedition with one of her uh, aero labs into the mountains and to try to search for the creature's uh, and uh, examine them that way with her specialized uh, instrumentation. I'll have um, the Plank sensors keep tabs on that expedition if it launches, just to make sure they're doing okay. <laughs> According to the data Scholar Lemmy has, it would seem that some of the materials that you're looking for and uh, reading into the language, you could probably do that as a reroll and try it again. But if you wanted to get more data on these creatures, you'd need to gather samples, like actual physical mm -hmm. bits of them. Um, and that's what she's heading off to do, is to try to gather stuff from the creatures as carefully as possible. All right. There was another question that we kind of uncovered. Now I just had it and it just 
went away again. <laughs> was that the um the the sonic and pheromone emissions? There was that, there? but there was something else that I thought of, and I had it again, and now it's gone. This is why oh, you take yeah. notes. Um. Mm, that probably requires samples as well. I think it. I think the thought I had was that we could try and figure out, like, they're not native, so where did they come from? Mm. Um. But I would assume that, like, that would take an analysis of the material that they're made out of. Uh, that, actually, that is a question you can attempt to answer. Uh, reason science, difficulty one. Okay. I don't trust like that. That's too easy. <laughs> Uh, do you want to take that, or shall I? Uh, my science isn't bad. Okay. Um, so go for it. Xenobiology? Xenobiology? I would take it. I mean, I'm no Dr. Phlox, but... Always a good sign when the uh, there. Jesus is cursing under their breath. Yeah, it means you're doing something right. Uh, is the doctor being assisted or is she doing it on her own? That's a good question. Would you like to assist? We're already at max. Yeah, I think it's just whether or not you like RP wise with myth. I think myth would probably be pursuing us like a, a secondary line of questioning while you were doing this. Okay. So, cool. Never we're doing something. I, I wanted to make sure. I didn't want to presume. That seems appropriate. I thought it was figure out where they're from. Maybe that can lead us to why they're suddenly so active. Yeah. Like if they're from a planet whose star suddenly, I don't know, just wasn't there. Well, I can't imagine why something like that would happen. Hmm. Double checking the info we're about to send to the doctor. Make sure it makes sense. Yeah, make sure you don't give away too much. Wait, you're the one that does that. There we go. So while the doctor has a look at that information, uh Commander Myth, what are you up to? <laughs> um I'd like to begin to go over the um the sensor information we have from uh, being up close with it. See if I can determine any sort of um, ways of immobilizing the creature more effectively, because the tractor beams seem to uh, mostly be exacerbating the issue. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Maybe don't have to worry about that. So, <clears throat> suggesting these are Arvo. Yeah, 
seems maybe, quite possible. Maybe, maybe generating an artificial graviton field will uh, effectively Don't make it... Don't you start techno-babbling on me. Will effectively make it so heavy that it can't like, that's move. That's my job! <laughs> exactly. Uh, computer? Like, I, I'm, I'm, half, I'm half joking, but I'm also half serious. Isn't that I mean, you, like, default? No, that's me default. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Afrix, you do have a float momentum for questions. Would a question be, are the to be considered larval form of whatever creature is? What life stage? Oh, uh, that's just the larval form. Oh no! I'll take I'll take a moment to answer that question. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> I was concerned. Uh, yeah. So, was, this isn't. It's not even its final but form. But they're from. Good news. Good news. These are not babies. Though according to the scholar scans, it seems like there are a uh, a variety. Mm -hmm. Okay. But they're all heading to the same mountain range. All right. No. Oh no! Go ahead. I was just mumbling to myself. Mm. Uh, yes, they all seem to be coming. They usually retreat into these mountainous regions. And if they attack, they usually come from that direction. So they'd come like this way or this way, this way, or wrap around the world, come like this oh. way. But there's also other smaller settlements in the region that get attacked, but they're not marked because there's, there's so many of them, or they're so small, yeah. it's not worth noting. Like temporary structures, a small craft that's serving as a shelter, that sort of thing. And the doctor or the the scholars planning a exposition in those mountains. Yes. Well, she's a well, uh, she's a she's not exactly a control scientist. She's very much a daring scientist. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, my concern is not about the creatures, um, uh, necessarily. They're secondary. Concerns. Yeah. <clears throat> ah, I see. So we're we're following around that science team that always dies in Godzilla. Great. You can't kill her. She's so cool. I like her. <laughs> <laughs> she must be protected. Hmm. Yeah, that like right. myth and, and ethics wouldn't a hundred percent do the same thing. I'm just saying. <laughs> I roll challenge dice. I roll six challenge dice. Yep, got a new one. Good golly. All right, wow. and that uh, effect. Counts for two. Yes. Oh, so that's actually eight, not seven. Mm -hmm. So eight work. You achieve one magnitude. What are you trying to do, Matt? Two momentum, break the work track. Sure. Um, I am doing analysis on the tractor beam data. Okay. So in one burst of research, you've uh, gotten a lot of data on the... Tr you're currently working on uh, pushing the adaptions into a more stable form in the hopes that it will... It won't basically blow out every EPS conduit and biogel pack on the ship when, if you do that again. 
Mm-hmm. You made a lot of progress, and thankfully, uh, you learned that your ship and crew are able. Were some you actually run into some crewmen and enlistees, as it were, who are already who are like kind of doing their own projects. Going, oh, here's something you should know. <laughs> yeah. Oh heck, we're already doing this. Works. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any Wait, fe- we found uh, this. <laughs> any other questions from FX before I look to other people? Um. Based on your last role, I just wanted to make sure. Or yeah, any questions about I'm what you have to... on that info so far? <laughs> yeah. Um. With the different the different kinds, is there is there readings to state that they like? have a common like audio frequency to use or a common chemical makeup that they use to communicate that's kind of combining what we learned before with information from their scans um you would need to spend a, a, a considerable amount of time either focusing your scans and trying to find the creature somewhere in the mountains or waiting until the aero lab finds them and is able to give you the okay. data that they have. Because right now, all that's known is that they're somewhere up there and that's why the okay. scholar is going there to try to like take a massive zeppelin and like fly it over the mountains look just the eyeball and look for them. Uh, I feel like such a bad idea. Why did you say that like you're considering doing it? Uh, no. I mean, like I said, I'm not saying that myself and Vin wouldn't do that if we, if it wasn't already being done. However, we have, like, ships with shielding. It has a shield, uh, emitter. Well, it has, po- sorry, correction. It has a polarized hull. And it's a small craft scale, too. They're perfectly safe up there. They're fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure, the, the evil mind behind this is... Consider that. And I believe the question extends off to Pend, Varder, and Grind, what they are doing during this research and uh, development. I'll probably research what I've found with myth. I'm trying to decide what Grenin's going to be doing, because I mean... <clears throat> oh, I forgot the main... V- Varder, seemed to, Varder seems to have the, the whole evacuation thing under control not evacuation or the um i mean are we still evacuating i don't know i'm putting together search and rescue (laughs) for the nine mia that disappeared near the freehold yeah no no no. i i know that but i i forget pen Did, did we agree that we were doing evacuations Yes. Yeah, so, okay, in that case, I'll try coordinating that uh, with some of, um, like, between Pend, Grenin, and the Baron's advisors, I want to start trying to coordinate uh, evacuation plans. Hopefully it'll be easier to do that since I'm here on the ground and able to work with them directly. Yep. So both of you can be working toward the same task, one lead, one assisting. Um, it become the question becomes, uh, where are you evacuating from, and then where are you evacuating to? Hmm. Well. <clears throat> uh, okay. So I think first things first. I have to determine where things are most dire. Nothing is presently under attack. Right. Hmm. You might be better off trying to coordinate a rapid response to relocate people should a location come under threat. Mm Mm-hmm. So a reactionary plan, but nothing preemptive. Yes. Actually, yeah, that's a good idea. So set up a, a plan 
so that people are ready to evacuate. Like, all, all hands on deck get ready to evacuate, like, the moment the alarm starts sounding. And, well, we have three ships. Uh... What's the general size of each of the three, uh... Each of the three main places? Um... The Freehold Fortress and Shelter are around 25,000 or so. Lowport has about 50... Uh, 50 50 some I'll get you a better number than that uh, 52,000 at the low port so 25, 25, 25 so like 75 plus an additional 50 so so uh, 120k or so hmm. okay That's and that's just in the plus or minus a few hundred because of the various random people who are spread across the planet who've been pulled into the cities who don't normally live there. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think, I think we want to focus, focus evacuation efforts as, as ironic as it seems on the freehold because distance wise, if these things are going to start, uh, well, the freehold and the low port are about the same, but as the mountain thing... wrapped around this way. Hmm. Okay, so that's also so that's also pretty close. Eh. It the the, the skull is the furthest away from them, from the yeah. range. Yeah. So I think the freehold and the low port should be given. Uh, effectively priority in our organization because those are probably the because if they set out at about the same time those will be the first places that they reach theoretically but what we're trying to do is we're trying to set up a preemptive evacuation plan um but you asked from where to where uh, yep. Hmm. I think if, we'll you're pull, if you're pulling them off, where are you pulling them? Where you, where do you want them? We know where you're prioritizing, but where yeah. are you trying to put them? <laughs> uh, what's the capacity capabilities of the um of the Larira? Let me get you that number. And I'll get your guys' number while I'm at it, because I'll have to I have to dig in the same uh pool anyway. Right, like Like Oh wait, yeah. That's... Yeah. I know how to look that up. I say I might just leave this for Grenon to do. Mm hmm Because it was uh, I was coordinating it, but I I have come up with a different idea. Okay, so well, that doesn't help me. So I want to look. So that means you can't, in effect, do... <laughs> I 
And then a Luna can take. Then an intrepid. <laughs> okay, so definitely starting with uh, the carrier. But even then, you're looking at evacuating a small percentage of any of someone's. That's why I was saying relocating to other places that aren't under threat. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, so, yeah. We can use the ships as intermediary places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll use the ship's uh, transporter capabilities to effectively allow people to move to locations not under threat. For to be able to move the Quaqua men, probably have to bring ships into atmosphere. Yep. Because the Quaqua men can't uh, safely go into leave their atmosphere unless they're in stasis. Mm -hmm. There are non Quaqua on the planet, but the majority of the population is Quaqua. Mm -hmm. uh, holding the ships in atmosphere at least the Federation ones shouldn't be a problem I don't know about the <laughs> yeah I don't know if the carrier can enter atmosphere or not the carrier well, can go, it can enter into upper atmosphere and then it, it's used to, and then it just dumps its fighters off well well, I was then the going to say well me men can use shuttles if, if that's the problem once they break the atmosphere of a planet uh, spatial psychosis sets in Qua Qua men if they're there for... No, 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 I get that, but I'm saying you hmm. could use shuttles to get from to get from settlement to, to settlement yeah, 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 within Atmo Yeah and, and that doesn't cause a problem So this sounds like the advantage of an emergency evacuation plan with priority on the freehold and low port to non-threatened areas uh, control or reason plus command difficulty of three. Uh, my uh, my reason is only is my reason is slightly better. Um, I'll spend a momentum team dynamics. Yep, oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. There we go. Get that momentum back. Ugh. So you start coordinating between the ships and with the uh, ground forces, uh, grounds, the civil government, uh, to have a system in place so that way, if priority, if low port or freehold get hit, then immediately they start. You start moving people toward the fortress or toward the shelter, or up to the ship for people who aren't to the ships if they're if they can safely come up to the ships. Mm hmm. Uh, what is Penn doing? Or Varder doing? I'll be right back. Oh, Penn, do you have anything before I take that from you two? Or you not planning <coughs> on doing anything with the uh, search and rescue? No, that one's all you. Sweet. Okay. <laughs> Let's get that sorted then. So you and the Major are going to be heading this way to help search and rescue. Uh, the Major uh, asks if you wish to board one of your uh, shuttles or if you wish to board on the Major's uh, personal mecha. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, the ground forces use uh, bipedal uh, mecha that cross as their ground force. They are essentially scale to small craft. With like cargo compartments and passenger compartments as needed. The major probably won't have. We'll probably have a, le uh, a little extra room to allow to for rescue efforts rather than being armed for like a uh, a war. That's that's not what you're here for. At least that's <laughs> not what this mission's about anyway. It's a, you can remove the extra ammunition from the back. 
Yeah, it's like we don't we don't need the nuclear warheads. That's not really we're not worried about that. Yeah, these things are armed with plasma cutters and uh, particle cannons. And normally nuclear warhead torpedoes, but if they're, that's usually for fighting at firing at ships, not oh. like. At... It's far easier to coordinate if we're both in the same place. So, <laughs> Mecca, I suppose. <laughs> that was not what I was expecting to be asked. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Shit. Oopsie, wrong one. <laughs> That things are massive. No, no, they're not. They're not that big. <laughs> there we go. That makes way more sense. Whoa. Turn it around. Make it to scale. Well, not to scale, but. All right, brilliant. So you're basically in a cockpit uh, that's on the top of the uh, structure. Uh, it's and you're you know how in uh, like fighter plane in fighter jets or fighter jets in jets, there's the front pilot seat and there's a seat behind them for the co-pilot yep. seat. That's where you're situated. So you can see there is like, you can climb down and get into the body of the suit, but that's for like, if you're repairing something or you're trying to get outside or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, bright side for me is the back portion generally has more screens and such to tap at for communication. So, Hey, it it's the major, yeah, and the major knows that you like isn't going to bother training you on how to operate the suit. It's like, no, no, I'll be the pilot. You work the, uh, the sensors because you know how that works, which it does. But it's like it's sensors, but in a very like hundred plus years ago tech. Like it's you know like Bajor was from not that long ago. Um, yeah, which is why I'm mainly just being like, okay, let's coordinate with one of our shuttles or whatever is available, and doing a different sweep. <laughs> It'll be different perspectives time. So you are attempting to find the lost soldiers, is my understanding? Yes. So the, I'll note that this thing, as it's flying across the uh, landscape, it does have the feet to move around, but it's usually, if it's moving very quickly across the ground, it has what amounts to uh, rockets or an ion engine that kind of blasts it across the landscape very quickly. Basically, um, it amounts to impulse speeds. These things can't go to warp on their own, but they can go incredibly fast. Mm -hmm. They only use the legs if they're actually doing like fine movements, like when they were fighting the big monster. Like, no, no, we're not using our rockets anymore because we're right up close to this thing. And don't worry, we don't have to move very fast. It's right here. Step, yeah. step. <laughs> uh, use so the rockets in that scenario if you want to joust them. <laughs> Why do I feel like they do that? They can joust, um, but they're plasma cutters. They're contact range only, so you can melee attack people. Brilliant. Okay. What is it with these people and swords? <laughs> well, it worked for the Steel Prince. It's, if it's good enough for the Steel Prince, it's good for the rest of us. <laughs> no! Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Don't worry, the suit's helping you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The grand total of 10. It's actually pretty good. Uh, decent sensors. Actually, it depends what you're doing. If you're doing uh, con or medicine. It's con sensors are better than it's medicine sensors. Probably con. You don't want me to do medicine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hmm. I would say either chain of command for <laughs> coordinating this up and down a chain to get this sorted. Or tactical yeah. systems, if that would work. I'd actually take tactical systems in this case. Okay. Just because of how it's the suit set up. It, this thing seems to be more looking for... When it's telling you to look for stuff, It's not. It's not, it doesn't seem to be helping you find people in distress. It's finding targets. And you're kind of tricking the system. And they go, yeah, find me targets. Or it's like, <laughs> ah, we're mocking these as friendlies. Yes, mock me the friendlies that are missing. <laughs> yeah. Mock me the ones out of formation. There we go. <laughs> That's the stuff. <laughs> uh, okay 
Okay. We have... Huh. Huh. Okay. No. Okay, we'll just do it this way. Um... <laughs> the value of more can always be learned. <laughs> Which is learning exactly how to manipulate the system on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll take that. Sweet. We'll just rock with that and... <laughs> uh, hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, that's what closed. Or my entire computer died. Let me pull that back up. <laughs> uh, I think we'll just... Unless Fad is spending a medal, but we'll spend two to squash. How much momentum did we get off that? Yeah, we'll probably just squash that with momentum. Squashed. Oh, right, there's other thing. Uh, you. Damn it. Oh, well, I got two uses out of it. Uh, scanners are able to detect the uh, personnel that are inside the pit that was left behind by the beast, and they are... They are in medical distress. They need emergency care. And basically be pulled out of the hole. Imagine a canyon that is a sinkhole that is opened up underneath people and they tumble down. And most of them are most of them are either injured to the point they can't climb up safely or they're unconscious. Okay. Um is there sensor interference inside the pit or once they're located it's pretty much a matter of pointing out exactly where to look uh you're basically you're basically like when you guys start the mecha kind of moves up to the whole edge of the hole and then like it's i start once they, you get close enough the major kind of lands it and then very carefully walks the thing up and then when you're that close you're basically almost con in starship scale you're almost contact range with your target so it's super easy to scan them so you can see the them clearly of say hey kismet can you read these signals <laughs> Yeah, they can they can channel through you and see them. Yeah. Okay. Then can we get the kismet to route them to a medi a Quaqua medical a surface medical facility, as in trans site to site? Because us trying to move them ourselves is probably a poor choice. And unless the major seems to be very good at medicine. <laughs> um. Let me check the major stats. Hold on. He might actually be pretty good at it. They're not good at it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Major points out to you uh, that is normally we pull them into the care of the scholars back at base. We usually don't treat them in the field that often. Yeah. Yeah, I remember hearing about uh, how Kwakwa physicians work, and that's if they go to the service, it's with a massive escort. Uh, I'm assuming your fortress would be the best place to have these people transported? Uh, yes. Well, well. Central link to Kismet. Lieutenant Commander Varder to Kismet. So as you're arranging that and doing the scan, time's passing. Uh, Pen, what are you doing? Um. So what I was going with, you have to tell me if it's possible or not. I is, usually do. Oh yeah. <laughs> is, End of the job. I was thinking, I going along the lines of say former operative or survival of previous experience of hunting dangerous creatures to what end so we know it's burrowed underground and fled to the mountain would I be able to use any form of former experience to best glean where in the mountain range would be the more likely location. Uh... I, obviously I can't speak specifically for this creature but previous experience with different creatures would lead to possibly in this situation, like this place. I'd give you an insight security diff three to kind of sit there and start plotting out in your head and thinking about what could happen, what's happened in the past and similar situations you're familiar with. Like you're guessing, but it's a very educated guess. 
So with that in mind, would you accept either the former operative or survival? Um, I'll take... At comp? Either. I'll take either without comp. They, they, they both fit for very different reasons. Uh, I'm going to roll three challenge dice. You get three. Oof. Yeah, it usually doesn't go that well for me, but okay. Uh, Reroll. Uh, best guess you have is that creatures like this, if they're trying to avoid, since they seem to react well to starships, like a lot of creatures don't know what to do with a starship when it's attacking them or messing with them. These things seem to be familiar in some way or acting like they're familiar on a conscious or instinctual level, who knows? Um, so they pr probably are going to go in as deep as they can into the higher mountains. So either somewhere at this Arctic point or somewhere at these high points in this area. More likely somewhere here than here, but it's possible that they're here as well because there's a good high point up here in the Arctic, but there's a, a much warmer point here that they could not necessarily go to the top of the mountain because that makes you easy to see from space, but you could go into the mountain and that even a natural rock formation can make scanners next to useless unless they're above ground somewhere. And even then, the rock kind of scatters uh, sensor pings. And I'd pass that information on to one, the Aero Lab to come to this location, and for the Kismet to move into an orbit above these locations. Scholar takes that information, because sure, why not? <laughs> okay, whatever narrows my search, sure. All right, so we've all had a round of seeing who's doing what. Uh, let's roll over to Efrix and Myth with their ongoing research. Efrix? Yes, I'm here. Peace. Uh, it's on you and Myth. Did you shoot that information to Myth already, or? I did. Okay. So, you mm -hmm. both have that information. I'm not sure if you want a, a new role, or if you wish to continue your existing tractor beam task, <laughs> or... Probably try yeah. and finish out my task, because I got a decent amount of progress on it. But... We have access to their stuff. Are we in contact with their researchers? Yep. Because you have a uh, you have Grenon at the low port uh, at the Baron's estate, you now have you basically have you're basically able to talk to anybody on the planet right now, like even part okay. of Doctor, considering the potential, this is these creatures are being used as a bio weapon of sorts. I am going to continue my efforts to find a more effective way of deterring them. Okay. Um, I guess I'd like to convey to the researchers down on the ground that, like, the idea, like, maybe there's a shared frequency or language uh, using their pheromones that maybe we could tap into if they can get a good scan of that. Uh, the scholar calls back to you. Ah, oh, yes, Doctor, Doctor Efrix, I believe. Yes, hello. Uh, yes, we're moving the Arrow Lab into position to seek out some of these mm -hmm. creatures. If we find any of them, uh, we will. 
uh, deploy some of our uh, field researchers to collect some uh, samples. Would you like to come along for this uh, sampling? Me as the player, yes. <laughs> You could totally send a supported character to be red shirted. I mean, to get a uh -huh. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. We might that... be needing to send a doctor down to help their medic. <laughs> They're injured as well. Yeah. Unfortunately, I, I may be needed as a medic before I need it as a researcher. Thank you for the offer, though. Um, I'm sure you've taken this into consideration, but. If there does happen to be someone that's in control of these creatures down there, what's your plan if you run into them? Uh, my plan is to draw my sidearm and fire at them until we can flee and inform the general of their location. Um, mm -hmm. It is not of a scholar's job to uh, engage in military activity. It is, well, beneath us, really. I'm more worried about you not being able to get away to oh, impart I'll that get, information. I'll get away. Um, my field researchers know the risks they signed up for. That's why they're getting paid so well. Mm. And their families will be proper compensated if they perish. I mean, I'm a reasonable <laughs> scholar after all. <laughs> she's, slightly, she's slightly less awesome now. <laughs> Oh, I'll get away. It's very good. <laughs> right. <laughs> Being alerted that my food is here. Um, Netflix is diplomatic enough not to say something, but boy, she wants to. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor, for not making my job hard. You could attempt a persuasion task to get the scholar to kind of be a little more careful with her personnel. Yeah, because if she has to hire more, that's more people that she has to bring up to, to um, stuff, and she has to train them the way she likes them to, to like take information down. Oh boy. Presence, presence Connor command difficulty too. Um I think doctor's orders Oh could come in. Yeah, you're trying to persuade someone to take a specific course of action. Yeah, to not <laughs> do something. <laughs> like you totally did that. Who knew those uh tokens would be useful in Discord? <clears throat> For, other than just uh, needling people. <laughs> um, let's see. Oop, nope, that wouldn't be a good one. That'd be a challenge if it comes to that. Um, I'm gonna spend one for cautious. Um, counseling. <laughs> A complication I'll take. Okay. Mm. Do I want to fish? I mean... In this time of year? Not really. <laughs> no call. Uh, walk into that. Culture is, is just such a interesting exploit. <laughs> God. Yes, I'm... Yeah, I, I walk into that one every <laughs> single time. Yeah, sure, call a friend. Hey. Never punish. <laughs> oh no, I get punished punish plenty. <laughs> You're able to talk Scholar Lammy around to the idea of preserving personnel and 
having those stick around a bit longer for well it's better to have experienced personnel than you know inexperienced personnel yeah constantly having to train new people and uh, the scholar uh, assures you that she'll take uh, especial care in this scenario. Normally, she trusts her field uh, researchers to know their business. But uh, in this case, given your con consultation, uh, perhaps this is one of those times uh, they can bring out, bring out the binoculars and not get up close and personal with some of these things, if at all possible. So she won't order her field uh, people to go up and close, but uh, she does tell you that some people who, seeking to get the scholar title rather than field researcher title uh, might just go out and do it anyway. And there's not a whole lot she can do to stop them because once yeah, they get I mean, on there, that's fair. They're on like their if own. it's their decision, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm, they, more, they, I'm less concerned about like the actual creatures because I feel like the researchers are a small enough target that that's not necessarily what he's got. What the bad BBG is going to send out. Like, it's going to be... You actually even get the sense that the scholar is being is more concerned about the welfare of the creatures than her own people. It's more important to her that she learns about these creatures than, uh, than I mean, preserving yeah. her uh, researchers, which they, that seems to be a common theme that you're getting from... You're not hearing too much argument from her associates around her. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. I feel like I've probably experienced that with xenobiologists in the past. <laughs> um, new alien, what this? Don't kill yeah. me. <laughs> new alien, what? New alien, what this? I'm, I'm also a little concerned that, like, whoever it is that are that is controlling these creatures is going to take advantage of that. Mm hmm. Because they know that too. That's why I have standing orders to get alerted if something goes wrong on the arrow lab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in essence. But yeah, then I'd probably end it with, well, keep us appraised. Actually, tactically, it also brought efforts over, so. What? You two are in a ship because uh, Penn's brought the Kismet in closer orbit to this area. Okay. But your ship is still up in orbit. You're, you haven't descended. So I don't forget where people are, technically. Mm. Um, oh, uh, that roll myth. Uh, roll challenge dice. All really checking for... Well, actually, we're checking to see if you get out of any hits at all for one magnitude. Mm. And if you hit five... That's One, five. Two, three, four, five. You're right. So that's two magnitude. So two magnitude. One left. You have one left. So you're almost ready to get it done. This is a very complicated thing you're doing, but uh, you get the complicated feeling. Complicated is the Planck's motto. Yeah. You get the feeling now it's just a matter, really, based on that work and that little difficulty, it's just a matter of turning the right switches and programming the computer to do what you want. You guys know what you... you it's you getting the research know. over to Max now. Yeah. The okay, K-Max, here's what we figured out. Oh. Okay. So how do I do that? Oh, we should probably tell you. Yeah, that'd be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> right. We didn't think of that part. <laughs> Theoretically, these are the things you could do. Cool. How do I tell the computer to do that? Oh, uh, one second. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go just my simulation. Uh, Varder wanted to evacuate the poor injured down here. Yes. Well, too bad. They all die because uh, it's a new scene. Not just kidding. Um, uh, that's 14 for it. Kills all the civilians on the planet. <laughs> I think it'll take more than that. <laughs> <laughs> um, just probably just getting someone on the kismet to transport we'll call that control or presence plus command difficulty 2 and the uh, the mobile suit will assist you with this mm. as you're directing the efforts from there uh, train of command 
I'm not too worried about them making the role to beam them. It's more making sure you're telling them where they need to be, who needs to be beamed where. Yeah, Make and sure probably to... having the appropriate permissions received from the major here. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, this is what I need. This is what I want to do. We're capable of doing this. Do we have permission? <laughs> <laughs> yes, good, great. <laughs> And then right. the major talk, basically talking to the fortress, going, "Hey, there's some people that are going to just materialize out of thin air, so don't freak out." <laughs> Have your medical teams ready, yeah, because <laughs> they're our people. <laughs> okay, that that, yeah, okay. We'll spend one momentum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please go through. There we go. I gained a momentum out of it. Noise. You have uh, uh, successfully rescued the uh, uh, the MIA uh, sol uh, Quaqua soldiers. Major looks over his shoulder up at you. Good work, uh, Barter, was it? Uh, as it was. Oh, good work. Thanks for helping me get my uh, our men out. Leave no one behind is a pretty common phrase. Nods. So where do you want me to drop you off? Or are you gonna materialize out of my back seat? Mm -hmm. uh, Vanish probably... into the mysterious ether <laughs> of the stars. Oh, we got a poet. Nope. Wherever you need right. me to try and help you, I'll do what I can. Well, until we get another attack, there's no whole lot we can do here. Patching this hole will be the mayor's problem. Uh, we can head back to the low port. We can dock here at the freehold. Or we can head all the way back to the fortress. Do I don't think heading to the footage? shelter would do us any real good. They have their own method of dealing with problems. Do you have combat footage from engaging the creature the first time? Uh, you, you see them fidgeting with their ear clicks and clacks of them flipping switches. Uh, here you go on screen two. And you see a video display. Uh, might as well head to the fortress. That sounds like where we might be the most use. Uh, actually, the low port's the one that's in between the both of them, so better respond to anything. And I will see if I can go through this and see anything. <laughs> I might have something to compare it to in these intelligence files of mine. <laughs> oh yes, here's this footage from s insert planet here of someone fighting a remarkably similar creature. Huh. Uh, there's actually a, there is actually a role for what you're looking into. Um, oh, no. I, wasn't expecting it, I wasn't expecting it to come from this direction, but I'll take it. Um, uh oh, are we about to are we about to figure out exactly what this thing is? Uh, yeah, no. Mm. We're about to find its cousin. Twice or maybe. Um, <laughs> cousins, brothers, nephews, college roommate. For reason security. Okay. What does that make us? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> ah. My oh. sister. My sister a few days ago mailed me a space balls the mug. Lead by example work here. Yeah, you're the one who's looking it up and doing and looking over the footage. Like, oh, here's the suggestion. Let's see. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's good when you take the initiative and things work out. Ah, <laughs> oh, hmm. It, mm, you've got 14 thread. Oh, fine, a momentum. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. I had a split what? second where I thought you said 40. 40 <laughs> momentum. Yes. 40 threat. Oh, yes. I'm giving him 40 threat for dice. I mean, it sounds like. Whoopsie. I will give us enough momentum to kill God. <laughs> but what does God need with a starship? Picking up honeys. <laughs> hey, you asked. I answered. So, what do you want me to do? <laughs> uh, Give a different answer. Simple answer. <laughs> uh, simple answer. Uh, question. Yeah. In a. 
In the GM's words, uh, this is why I show up every week. You mean this is why you show up late every week? <sighs> Thanks. You're welcome. The motivation and the timing can be separate. So you look over the files and then you take some time to look up some of the files from the Kismet because you have a link to it to figure out, to start, you start doing some intelligence work and start comparing information. So while you process that information. <clears throat> oh boy. Oh, fuck. Um, that first sentence even, okay. Yeah. I'm just going to put that bonus at the top of the screen for Varder in case he has questions. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, this leaves Grenin Efrix pen. Yeah. No, Efrix talked to Lammy. I remember now. So it's Grenin pen right now. Okay. You get a report that ma Major Yemek gives a report uh, that uh, P and Barter have returned to Lowport and have successfully rescued the MIAs from the hole near the freehold <laughs> and were transported uh, to a uh, fortress. Very good. <clears throat> um, you also have data that it seems like the Kismet is moving into orbit closer to this area and the Aerolab Leak Royal is moving toward this area. Uh, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hanging on. Yep. For dead life. Okay. <clears throat> ha, 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 ha. Um. I see. I'm just trying to decide what I want to do. Um. Anyone have any suggestions? I'm I'm struggling to come up with stuff to do. <laughs> I mean, you can continue trying to flirt with the Baron and his general, getting the good uh -huh. books. Hmm. Yeah, so I could go over. Uh, I could go. I'll go over to the general, start a, uh, start a conversation in a rather innocent way by being like, you know, uh, how are um, <clears throat> how are things going like how is the um how is the ongoing uh how, how's the ongoing response yay he spent threat i'm in danger i'm in danger <laughs> roll to <a> flirt <laughs> uh i'm gonna spend three momentum Dipl diplomacy focus? Um, yeah. Uh... I'm just trying to decide on something. Is this, um... Nah, no, nah, okay. Okay, that's fine. Um... Looking <laughs> giggling with glee from his on his best roll. Sorry, we're reading over a question that Sparder sent me. I'm kind of. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that's for the the bonus. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm not seeing that word you mentioned. That's what I'm a little lost. Uh. Oh, there it is. I see it now. Yep. I, I my I skipped over it like five times. Um. Okay. Uh, I heard giggling, so and that seemed like a happy giggle. Yep. As you talk with the general, uh, the general, uh, once you start talking professionally and asking about, you know, professional banter, as it were, uh, general confides in you and says, well, for non qua qua, you are accounting for, you and your people are accounting for yourselves, which is better than some and you are although shamed a gentleman of the court so i see that the star navy isn't just handing those out to any uh white-skinned uh traveler <clears throat> frankly i think that this is a I'm beginning to believe that it is not an attack by your Starfleet, these creatures. I'm beginning to believe that perhaps this was a Chagoan effort, or more rarely a Woohoo effort, to uh, push us away from this planet. You would not be working so hard to take apart your own plan. Um, and besides, if you wish to further insult my Steel Prince, uh, this would be a very roundabout way to do it compared to your actions at Cooley. Hmm. And, uh, in, it, it, for all we know, it could be a, uh, uh, it could be actions of remnant groups of Chigoans. Um, our Starfleet has encountered, uh, splinter groups acting after the fall of the uh, concern before. So it's not entirely out of the realm of possibility, but uh, I'm not going to jump to any conclusions. Mm. I do hope that you answer the honorable call to court in the future for your own soul's sake. But for now, you are counting for yourself as an officer. Perhaps your mistakes are simply the follies of your youth. Hmm. And for that, I will attempt to forgive you. Appreciated. The very kind of smiles and doesn't doesn't intercede just been paying attention because you're not that you're like in the same room as he is and he's doing stuff and he kind of just looks up smiles and nods appre appreciatively that that conversation seems to be going well as far as the baron's concerned and then baron goes back to his business because mm -hmm, that's what you two are for mm -hmm. oh i okay sweet sweet i found the thing out <laughs> far uh -oh. <laughs> oh no <laughs> Right, so we will. I have communication systems in the back here. I can just loop in everyone I need to. So, Myth, Grenon, Ephrix, pend on the Kismet. And Grenon can have whoever he wants looking over his shoulder or listening in, because whatever, the Matrix also sitting here and hearing this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, cross referencing combat footage from the Quaqua with historical records that we have. It appears the Enterprise uh, encountered more or less the same creatures in 2269. Some, uh, a sector adjacent to this one, actually. 2269. You mean Kirk's Enterprise? Yes. There have been several. <laughs> But that's why I gave a date. 
<laughs> anyway. Eric's suddenly doing math. <laughs> <laughs> it would appear oh. that the <clears throat> creatures are capable of entering a dormant stage, which provides minimal life sign readings and may well explain why the Guacua were unable to detect them before now. So it's the fact that they take the appearance of being just a rocky outcrop or part of a mountain, that they blend in with the environment. As I suspected. Uh, fording to Commander Myth and Lieutenant Commander Efrix is what's left of a chemical residue that was effective in uh, affecting the creatures in a short term. Mm -mm. More like um, it's like tranquilizing them. Like horse tranquilizer and lots of it. <laughs> I see. Is, that, that's accurate, right, GM? <laughs> kind of make that, That's a way to put it, yeah. <laughs> which oh and which by the way now that we're at this point i can now say with certainty i absolutely know which module you got this from. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so sorry buddy <laughs> mm -mm. uh that is something for if the either myth or efrix to take a look at and perhaps recreate and may provide a solution okay. either way we're somewhat <clears throat> we are more familiar with this creature than we thought we were so, okay. what do you know about, uh, what were the circumstances under which Kirk encountered these creatures? Um, chasing a criminal? A criminal? <laughs> An escaped felon? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? They were pursuing someone I kind of accidentally found. Who were they pursuing? Uh, I'm pretty sure this is a human, so they're dead by now. <laughs> Someone called Harcourt and Mud. <laughs> womp womp. This is, we'll find out that Mud is actually some kind of eternal being. God. <laughs> He's not actually alive still, is he? I don't think so. <laughs> well, you I don't mean... want me to answer that question. <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna assume he's dead until I look it up. Otherwise, it, it, before <laughs> Mud is like the un this universe's big bad. I think he's technically still alive in the STO timeline. So, in <laughs> yeah. theory, one a human could live that long. They'd be super old, though. Yeah, they'd they'd be like admiral. Because he was um, he was like oh like maybe th theoretically he could be alive now. Than... I'm saying in STO, he's still alive. <laughs> Yeah, that's like another hundred, two hundred years later. Oh dear. I think he's also still doing illegal stuff and staying off the grid, so it makes sense to not yeah, know. Yeah, sound, sounds about right. It's also not relevant. Mm, not relevant, but huh? Weird. Anywho, uh, did I mention the substance is like a crystal? Of course it is. <laughs> you, 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 what is it with this? <laughs> God damn Stop shit. It. This GM Stop plays it. with crystals too ah, god damn much. Did you see? Get I am an expert. Motherfucking crystals off my motherfucking did you starship. Enjoy me withholding that little bit of information for a second. Uh but, but when you literally when you say oh they're crystalline like the the baron and the general just see Grenin's twitch. Twitch.tv. Mm. Just do uh, Twitch. It says, I see. Voice crack and all. <laughs> oh. Um, Forewarning that substance, it's don't lucky let it's anyone that it's actually us. ingest it. Mm. No, hey, no none of us. Don't let any of us ingest it or be exposed to it in some manner. <laughs> Was anybody planning on licking the creature? He's dumb. No, not the so creature, the crystal. <laughs> crystal substance thing. It's like a... He was trying to mark it as a fox love but I could just send you the report. <laughs> oh. Oh, that! Toxic substance. Okay. No, it just makes you depressed. Yes. I see. And hostile. Scholar Lammy cuts into the call eventually and goes... 
Oh, how very interesting. I've been brought to the attention of what you've found, and I think we can be of help. Oh. Well, I'm looking at some of this data. I mean, it's very... Uh, unusual, but it is tenable. Um, you see, I think they made an issue back then. They, uh, well, either they didn't have the technological know-how or they just simply didn't, weren't very good. But in either case, if we're able to gather some material from these creatures in some manner, we could use that to synthesize it in such a way that it's more, it's targeted. It seems the original pharmaceutical was a general application meant for uh, temporary uh, euphoric uh, situations rather than long-term control. Mm -hmm. So if either myself, if either the Leak Royal or the Kismet were able to gather uh, their relevant material, we should be able to discover uh, a from these creatures a way to, without having to destroy them, a way to control them. Unless that's already been figured out. That is actually very possible. <clears throat> hmm. That sounds oh, entirely could that possible. The, could could that be the chemical compounds we were seeing? We'll our look scans. Into it find out. Um, controlling them. <clears throat> to what extent? <laughs> Well, one could control them if it's synthesized specifically for a target bi bio. It can uh, manipulate the biologics in such a way that it's a permanent dependence, a uh, addiction of a sort. Therefore, they have to respond to the drug. Um, I mean, there are two ways. Now, depending on how their biologies work, you would have, especially since they're rock based, you'd have to change it because this seemed to be working for more carbon based meat bags rather than rock bags, if you follow me ugly bags of mostly water. Well, you might be ugly. I'm not. <laughs> um. uh, I'm pretty sure that's crossing ethical lines for us. Yeah. Yeah. But being well, able to figure out if such a thing has already been attempted or indeed affected on these creatures... Could yeah, explain that's... the hostility. The general speaks up. I am 100% certain that someone must have done this then. If I were to deploy these kind of creatures on a world, I would want I wouldn't want to just let loose the beasts and see what happens. I'd want to be able to direct their efforts towards certain directions. Um, mm. How many attacks have there been? Just the one or? Just the one today. In In total. Uh, there have been a total of uh, four attacks. Uh, Presumably one on each of the settlements. Right. Like to... Okay. That would be something to go over well, and check if there's may... any sort of strategic or against... something that makes sense outside of a... Well, it may be against epics to control the creatures. Maybe we can target it so that it acts as a repellent. Yep. Keeps them away. Basically, a, something you can put around your cities and settlements, and they don't like it, they go away from it. The Baron speaks up. All I care about is they stop destroying my cities and my holdings. If they want to scurry about in their mountains and chew rocks, they can go ahead and do that. Making a repellent would work, then. Indeed. Uh, that I'll seemed, leave that to you. <laughs> I was going to say, that seems, like the, uh, that seems like the next step, then. Developing a repellent, as it were. If the general doesn't mind, I'll look at the available information from the previous attacks and see if anything strikes me as particularly tactical in their movements and actions. I've got a different perspective on things, so maybe I'll see <laughs> something. <laughs> Grenin, Grenin grumbles to himself. Uh... <clears throat> Well, if it was Kirk, it was sh probably sure as hell flashy. Oh, yeah, okay. Here's that security. It probably involved him losing his shirt, let's be real. <laughs> That's how you knew it was a good episode. <laughs> Would Gorilla Wolf at work here? 
that yes. that slash just across the nipples for some reason. I, I was yep. kind of hoping that would be a no. Oh, that's bad. Okay, guerrilla warfare. I love that. That's okay, the one. sure. Yeah. Um, You're like, how did you manage to rip your shirt there? But there's not a seam. I don't know. Wow. Oh, okay. harder. Yeah, I know. That is. I paused. One second. But, uh, mm, Kirk, those pecs. Mm hmm. Totally <laughs> man bosoms. So is that being squashed? Um. <laughs> I mean, in one way or another, yes. No, I don't have anything that necessarily makes sense for that. So yeah, I'll just use uh, the Legion of Honor. <laughs> yeah, some shoe. <laughs> I don't like that. That was a yes from Girl Warfare. <laughs> I had to ask anyway. <laughs> I did that the wrong way around. Doop, doop. Just processing the information. As you do. Don't tell me what I do. Just get super defensive. And certainly don't tell him how well or shit he does it. Oof. <laughs> Nothing surpasses the scorn of Pent. It's right, I've still got my action from from this round. Oh, what is your action, by the way, while I'm processing this? Uh, considering the abundant new information, would we, from moving the Kismet into these areas here, be able to get a more detailed scan and maybe pick up some location? Say again, sorry? So we've moved the Kismet into these two ranges here. Would it be possible for us to s scan and possibly gain some idea of their location or movements? Anything? Uh... There we go. Uh, come on, get over there. Reason science, dip four, assisted by sensor science. I think I will direct Cecile to do that. <laughs> so that's difficulty three due to sensors. Uh, spending three momentum. Ah. You okay? Yeah, I just sneezed. Would you allow the geology focus who are looking for rot like beings in a mountainous range? Yes. So convenient. I mean, if you would have said no, I would have said observa ask for observation. This is where uh, the uh, one of those uh, 
There's a species that basically gets bonuses when they do anything that re- re- involving rocks and geology. Like it's, oh. all, it's their. What species is that? That's Arda- awesome. It's the Ardanians, not the high folk, but the people who live in the mountains. Hmm. It's it's Seven, their it's one of their two, species. Four, uh, six, eight uh, abilities. That was abilities. nine Count. successes. So we gained. We gained six. Uh, we enter a new scene as your investigations are <laughs> are uh, getting more and more uh, detailed, and yeah. you actually are able to find uh, uh, penned in on the kismet, and the, uh, the arrow lab kind of is kind of uh, is made aware of this as well because they're connected through you guys. Um, that nestled inside the mountains and now knowing what to look for you can actually find uh, a variety of creatures that are living in the mountains uh, um and i'll even put it to you like such if i can send it to you do to do How do you even get that picture? Hmm? What the hell are you talking about? What, what, I Kirk, just went to Google and searched oh. Kirk Rip shirt. Like, what, what, how, what situation does that make sense? Oh, when he was fighting <laughs> Spark. Yeah. And he got but cut across the, the chest with time, the giant polearm. It's not, it's not the only time he got his shirt ripped there, though, is the thing. It did happen. And, like, but, yeah. in that fight, it kind of made sense. Yep. But, but if there's an excuse to flash the, the nips. Ones, like, how? Why? Like, okay, so the chair just broke there. that I'm sitting on. <laughs> it's just a loud snap um, when I went back, and I was like, oh. At least you didn't pull a lip and go over backwards. If I did, I'd hit the wall immediately behind me and bounce. Oh, I forgot you guys changed your setup. I was like, wait, no. Uh, so, would we be able to tell that they're all from the basic same heard like same basic sp- species kind of um, um they're the doctor actually, oh. actually has that information <clears throat> yeah i have that information so you, well would you be so able that was to... the thing that took me off that, that that something yeah that was what took me off that um something not normal was going on because they're um, different species of the like kind of creature um, enough different that like it would be they wouldn't necessarily live together and they wouldn't breed together and so the, the fact that there this many appeared on one planet is like that happening randomly is almost I, a zero percent. I have an chance. answer for this. And it was stated that we needed some form of biological sample to create the repellent, correct? Um, I mean we could try to develop it without that, just based on the the information we've had to directly target to this to the creatures we would need um, samples uh, GM is it possible 
that some of these creatures are either isolated or are leaving visible pebbles behind. How do you mean I'm not following? Well, one, if, if there's any of them Were they are, injured? Oh, no, no, like, the two things I'd, I'd either go for is, like, are there any that are isolated away from the main body? Or are they leaving some form of excrement, i.e. pebbles, behind? <laughs> uh, there are certain types. The smallest type tend to be, if I remember correctly, the smallest type tend to be... Uh, are the solitary ones the other types that exist there's two other types that are much larger and they tend to herd together uh the second type tend to herd together and then the big ones will kind of herd together but they can kind of spread out anything about the pebble dashing uh not that would be of use i don't think because that still technically classes biological. Um, my question stands as well. Like, were any of them injured in the packs? Uh, oh, uh, there is no sign of real injury or lasting injury. They when okay. something seems to happen to them, uh, they just glance it off. Most of the damage isn't so much them; it's the the rifts they do into the mountains or into the ground when they pop out or they burrow down. Oh, I meant, if, did they take any damage? Like, did they leave chunks of themselves behind when they were attacked? No. I kind of figured, but it was worth it was worth asking. Uh, Varder, just to give you an idea, basically that simple. Uh. Oh, there. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> okay. Just give me an idea what it's what, what that looks like. Uh. I mean, I do have an idea, but I know no one is gonna go for it. Secret <laughs> organization is my specialty. <laughs> I really should just get a focus on that at this point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. The idea which no one's going to go for is targeted strikes at certain, I'd say, um, parts of the creatures to see if we can just damage them. And well, being... we can't get to them. They're like, gone. Ooh, let's... So I tough. actually, I'm going to walk that back. Uh, bits of the armor does chip away. They just regenerate it. That's that's why they, they never look hurt, but bits of them do fall away. Okay. Which normally that just looks like rocks. But okay. since you know what to look for, you know there's rocks. There's the rocks that are supposed to be here, and there's alien rocks that aren't supposed to be here. Then can we spend the two float so we can identify and beam up as much alien rock as possible? Okay. Um, because that's why I was thinking maybe like a, a small target is strike to just chip a piece of them off. But if there's going to be pieces of rock lying around, for two momentum, yeah, I'll, I'll let you just grab some. Uh, Doctor Commander Myth, I'm beaming some alien rock samples to the science labs. It appears these are from the rock beasts. This may be able to help in your research. Understood, Captain. Thank you, Captain. So, the scholar says, what we could do hmm with those samples uh i can begin to synthesize something in my lab 
Um, I could certainly use some assistance in this, though, because this is... I'm comparing notes with an alien species, and I can translate quite a bit of it, but uh, you know... I presume you know your science more than your predecessors do. It's been a hundred years, yeah. My day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I assume the Doctor and Miff will probably play nice with the Skull. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Oh. Yeah. The intention is for Efrix and Myth to beam over to the Aero Lab. Mm. Well, um, I need to talk to the Major here as well. well Major's waiting in. I uh, basically get to the uh, control room again, <clears throat> the, the audience chamber. Brilliant. <laughs> no one there's wearing that little thing, are they? No one appears to be. Just enough, I'm going to expect someone to try and kill me the second I speak here. Oh. <laughs> She's not here. Scott Lammy's not here. General's having a chat with Grenin. I might have okay. asked the right question. Hey, guys, we <laughs> wanted combat today, right? Yes, I'm having a chat with the general. I mean, you I'm explaining always just. I'm, I'm, I'm just explaining to the general what an absolute mess Captain Kirk was. <laughs> like, God, you think I'm bad. I mean, you are. Coming from the absolute mess that is Grenin. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Op ends of the spectrum. Uh, me? Uh, harder. Oh, yeah, I asked a question. <laughs> huh. Hmm. Guerrilla warfare. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, you're getting a threat for this one. <laughs> Sam. Good. Brilliant. Two floats. Oh, the, the scholar is actually like already controlled. <laughs> but yeah, I'm. I'm capturing the kismet while Grenin's on the ground. <laughs> Uh-oh. Is it literally everyone um, else in the room? Doop. <laughs> no, just those three. Okay. Uh, the two float, I can discreetly point those out to the Major in a manner that a military man such as himself is likely to understand. <laughs> Like a, I'm going to say a thing, <laughs> and yep. you can be ready. <laughs> For two, uh, the major kind of makes a note, uh, makes a look at you. Uh, basically, you you can kind of sense the. Do you want them to be? It makes a stabbing motion, or a get out motion. Do you want them stabbed, or do you want them out of here? <laughs> There's an option. Just have them out and out. <laughs> Just out. <laughs> Soldiers of the Watch, you are relieved. Bring in the second line. They kind of look at the Major. They look at the General. He stares at them. They need to look at it. They immediately, you know, get uh, realize that their lives are on the line if they stay here for any longer, and they very quickly get out of the room. <laughs> And then brand new ones come in. Do they also have the same thing or no? And they do not. Uh -oh. The fact you have to spend threat for that <laughs> is a squint. <laughs> or, you know, this just wasn't visible. Okay. Um, 
if I may speak, I have potentially uncovered something as to the origins of these creatures and exactly their purpose here. Does this have something to do with the three individuals that were just asked to leave? Yes. All right. And that's, like, that's the Gren question Gren for Gren you. <laughs> like, Grennan looks uneasily at the general. General kind of looks at the major and tilts his head a little bit. Uh, they've been detained for the time being. I'm not entirely sure I know what the Mr. Varder is up to, but I'm sure he's about to explain. Yes. Uh, from what I've been able to see from records that were provided, you had a traitor named uh, Zinkilo. Zinkilo? make trips between this sector and the Motherlode sector. Otherwise, the sector that these creatures are from. Delivering bulk mineral ore and geog ge geological samples. With enough irregularities around those things to suggest he bribed officials to just land these things without proper clearance or inspection. And you think that these geological samples were... That would make sense. With the number of trips and the duration that took place over two years, and then this follow-up, there was a... His activity is linked to a radical group known as the Cooley Order of Steel. Little pause after that kind of quick look, like quick glance around if anyone reacts untowardly to that name. The mentioned. Baron stands out of his chair. Oh. Watch him be a part of it. <laughs> General. Yes, Baron. I want these blighters of the Steel Prince's Light found. I want them here to face my judgment. And if they refuse to see the mercy in that, I want them to feel the judgment of Steel, as they seem to be so eager to deserve. Starfleet, I hate to involve you in our backward ways of those who would dare to travel the stars only to lament it, but I would appreciate your assistance in capturing these traitors. And perhaps, gentlemen Grennan, you may see yourself honored in the halls of the Steel Prince for such an act. Hmm. Well, we'll do what we can. Our primary goal, of course, is to uh, pacify the uh, giant monsters that the conspirators are utilizing. Without that, I, I uh, think any attempts to bring these people in would be ill-advised. Uh, I can assist the ground forces, uh, and if Ensign... Sure, uh, sure, sure. What the? How many repeating sounds does that name have? Uh, Ensign is, Asala is fine, sir. <laughs> Ensign Asala is not otherwise occupied, Captain. I would appreciate her assistance in the matter. Very good. I assume that, uh, Aaron is familiar with this organization, then. <laughs> what do you... Yes, what can you tell us about them? All I know is the name. Oh, I know a lot about them, actually. Uh, Radical Kaka, uh, offshoot of a sect called the Purebloods. They prefer Kwakwa's natural abilities to technology. They natural don't think, abilities? They don't think civilization should be allowed to disrupt a planet's natural ecology. They're extremist environmentalists. And yet they brought in 
creatures from an outside world disrupting the extremists are often hypocrites okay <laughs> grenin Un says okay gentlemen and he, grenin and he just rubs the bridge of his nose these people saw the heroics of our founding princes and saw the talents of our brave pilots in their mobile armors and mistook, mis, mistook the mistook the actions of them to be something that would persist across millennia. But they forget that time marches on and all things change. They would see us walk backward and hide in our world and pray to the Steel Prince for salvation. Though the Steel Prince is full of grace and is a defender of our people, it is by his sword and by the pistols of our women that we march out and conquer what is rightfully ours. These fools would see us cower. And for mm. that, they are cowards and traitors both, deserving no less than death. But thankfully for them, we have laws. So should they come into my care, they will be processed as is according citizens of his royal highness. Well, as long as you're guaranteeing them a fair trial, see no reason to not uh, assist in uh, uh, assist in your actions against them, presuming you formally ask me for them. I believe that I am, gentleman Grenin. Very good, Barter. I assume you can take. Uh, you can handle matters from here. I can assist the Quakwa ground forces in apprehending their suspects. There you go, Baron. Major. Hmm? Thankfully familiar with Quakwa operations. <laughs> Due to that little joint training effort I did with, well, their Marines, granted, but hey. And Grenon looks to the general and says, I'll continue to coordinate from here. Very good. That's Soldier, good. stand aside. <sighs> Conveniently, uh, <laughs> rather useful, actually, that joint training I did with them. <laughs> All right, Mr. Varder, I believe we have criminals to uh, see off to. Let's pay a visit to this traitor and ask him nicely whether or not he wishes to die. Well, where would those three guns go? It'd be a good start. And the three of you carry on. It also kind of looks around the room a little lost at the moment, but deciding to stick around. He's learning. <laughs> Chatting with the person next to him a bit. I was like, she's got to focus on small arm sidearms and she's not doing anything right now. So I can bring her along. And of course, Grenon is going to update all the folks up top. Plus, anatomy can be argued as a good focus for melee. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, with that, that will be the end of part one.